<laughs> I'm live, aren't I? I am eating this amazing oatmeal. I apologize. These days, Fridays and Mondays happen so quickly that uh, I'm often caught a little bit off guard as I try to feed myself. So today, here are my questions. Yay. Yay, yay, and yay. How are you? How is everyone today? Great to have you in the house. At this point, all two of you. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It's, you know, I was going to try to be at my usual time, 920, but unfortunately I had a battle with my, um, with my computer. My computer uh, and I were having a, you know, computers work at their pace. They are a stop and smell the roses kind of machine. And when they want to stop and smell the roses, they just do. So, yeah, they just do. So that was this computer's feeling today was to stop and smell the roses. So I had a knockdown drag out fight this morning and uh, was late to go on Terry's tribe. And so I wanted to give them a little extra. And so it just all stacked up. Happy Friday, everyone. How are you? Welcome to Terry Harden's AMA. If you're joining me on YouTube, you might find this a bit unusual. And that is just because I pretty much turn on the camera, look at some questions my dear friend Leo Holzer has, has uh, compiled for me from all of you, and I answer them. That's plain and simple. Who am I? I'm a Disney Imagineer who did the Dragon's Lair, who designed and created the Dragon's Lair under the castle in Paris. And, uh, and then I've done Splash Mountain Tokyo. I worked on Splash Mountain Tokyo with a ten, team of 10 people. And my, my art can be seen all over the world. Yes, I am international and I'm also a trademarked artist. So why? Why would you ever listen to me? Because I tell you the truth. That's why. So if you're on YouTube and you're looking in and you're going, wow, this is kind of strange and weird. And wow, what's with that girl? That's what's with that girl. This girl. So welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, for those of you who have always joined me before, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm very happy to announce that I have a new member on Patreon. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Simply because the community needs your voice. And uh, I'm going to pop up as I usually do. Those of you who know me, this is how I start. Uh, Patreon.com, Terry Harden, this is where you go to check it out. No obligation, nothing grabs you and makes you join. It's just something that I, I highly encourage you to look over because uh, during this time of sadness and, and not so great stories, not all of them are, are bad stories, but, uh, but there we're all about supporting each other and being creative, etc., etc. So if that appeals to you, go check that out. Also, uh, YouTube. This is where I am broadcasting from now. If you want to join, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, I will tell you that I'm just learning YouTube. It took me, I know, so, I know. It took me two years to figure out how to upload a video. I'm sorry. I'm 63. That's going to be my story, and I'm sticking to it. This internet is a challenge for me every single day, right? Okay, and if you'd like to uh, learn more about what's going on with me, this is a kind of a one wheel down, three wheels up. Maybe it's two wheels down now, but I am working on building this website. You can go over there. If you decide to bless me with your email, you get some Disney drawings I did as a gift, and I'm about to put on up a, uh, a little uh, uh, document, I guess. Document may not be the right word. But just a little thing when I talk to you about how to be an Imagineer, that's going to be in writing and you can download that to you. It'll get to the point where you can choose what you want to download, okay? If you decide you want to do that. Okay. Woohoo! We're done. Let's take a little look at where you guys who's joining us today. And today we have in the house the amazing Leo Holzer. And he is, uh, he is the person who has compiled this for me. You know, it's cute. He said he was very tired of doing this, and then all of a sudden you guys started asking questions. I hope you continue to do so. Ask the questions, any kind of question. 
it, I pretty much will, will, I invite you to ask me anything. I might not answer everything, depending on what the question is, but I'll answer the most I can. And I'm always telling the, I'll always tell you the truth. Why? Because that's just me. Um, no catalytic converter on my mouth whatsoever. Oh, sure. Blame the computer, Michael. You're adorable. Yeah. I wish I could. I, it, it, and I get so very few things really rile me up having trouble with the computer when I'm doing the same exact keystrokes I've done for like weeks and it doesn't work. Ah! And I remember talking to a technician years ago and he said, the road, the road to Hades is uh, paved with, uh, is, is repetition in this thing. You repeat it and it doesn't work. Oh, well, that's the way it is. The computer has a mind of their own, right? Happy Friday. And thank you. What a cute picture of you sitting on the bench in front of a lovely garden. That's gorgeous. Good morning. I like doing this part. I know if you are someone who's just joining us, you're, you're sitting there going, what in the heck are you saying? But, uh, <laughs> yay. Hello, David. Welcome. Good morning, one and all. Yes. Good to have you. And Dennis, yay, that's the idea. Okay, so ask me anything. Before we do that, let me give you an update. A little update on a couple of things. I am going to be teaching pumpkin sculpting virtually. So as you know, I am a judge on Outrageous Pumpkins on the Food Network, currently happening now every Sunday. And if you didn't know that, go check them out, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern, and uh, take a look. Now, we're in the third episode, aren't we, guys? And uh, if you're like, no, I didn't know about it, don't panic. It's the Food Network. And every Sunday, they show the other two episodes, or the other episode, they lead into the actual new episode. So you can watch it or set your DVR or whatever you want to do to see where you left off, okay? Uh, my hairdresser yesterday, I got my hair done. He was saying that he thought I looked a bit too white. That's impossible. <laughs> that when they made me up, they were trying to play down the fact that I'm of mixed races. It can't happen. You know, he thought my hair should have more interesting styling. He wanted to twist it up and do all this sort of thing on the top so that I had some sort of bun or something. But, you know, honestly, they just wanted to, uh, they were so fascinated by the hair on its own that, you know, guys, they just, they just let it do what it was going to do, you know, and they had, um, yeah, they had Allison and Allison's the host. And so they focus on the host and then they did, you know, and I'm not one to wear makeup if, if you've realized so. If the lipstick looks weird and the makeup looks weird, it's going to look weird because I don't wear makeup usually. But for television, they insist. So that's where it, where it stands. But why I'm bringing this up is because my pumpkin sculpting classes this year are going to be virtual. And I am going to be teaching them uh, that week uh, leading up to Halloween. So the dates I have right now are... I thought I'd have this memorized, but I don't. It's like, why am I memorizing it? Uh, right now, and don't do anything because I'm setting up the web page with my web designer as we speak. So I need the weekend to finish that up. So Monday I'll say go. And if you want to do it, yay! No pressure again. But uh, I'm going to teach a class on the 29th and 30th of October, end of this month. Between, it's going to start at 10 a.m. Pacific and will end and I say this like this, end at one. If we want to go longer, when I teach live, which I can't, I'm not doing this year at all. No, nada. Uh, when I teach live, I go till God turns the lights out. So you can stay as long as you want. And I will work with you. Okay, so this will happen with the virtual classes too. If a few of you want to stay later because you just want me to hold your hand a little bit longer virtually. Uh, I'm willing to do that. Okay. I will also post video, uh, a, uh, a link to go purchase my video and my uh, tools if you want, but you don't have to. What I'm going to do on Monday is show you the tools and you may, they, they're going to look familiar to you. 
And when they do, you're going to say, well, hey, I have those or I know someone who has those, you know, and if they do, you can use those tools. OK, just wash them after. But the point is, you don't need to buy mine under any of circumstances, but mine makes it easier. You buy it. You got it. You're done. Right. OK. And then on the 31st Halloween, I will be teaching a class from nine to 12 Pacific. And we will stay later if you want, but some of you were, may be actually having a Halloween event. I don't know. I don't think in my neighborhood we're going to have one. Um, but they could surprise me. I'm going to get all set up. I'm going to put pumpkins out front that I've sculpted. I'm going to have the show so people can come by and take a look at our house. But I don't know that anyone is going to go past my gate into and do um, and actually trick or treat. We're going to be prepared for it, but I don't know if it's going to actually happen. But those classes, if you live across the pond, you live or you live up above us in Canada or you're in Mexico or you're not in the United States is what I'm saying, then you are welcome to reach out to me via messenger and ask me for a time that works for you. OK, you hear about these classes, you're excited, you like to get a group together and do them, then if that works for you. Also, if you want a one on one with me to teach you pumpkin sculpting, that's going to be a couple hundred dollars, but I will sit with you as long as it's needed and we'll work one on one and you'll be the only student or you and a couple from your family, you know, but that's the other option. All right. But all of that is going to be told to you specifically Monday because I still need to set up where you go and how you do this. All right. I actually have had people sign up for the live class and I've had to say, whoa, don't do it. I'm not doing it this year. So um, it's just trying to fix all of that up, right? Hitchhiking Ghosts. I was really hoping that Monday I could show you my first art proof prototype because they are beautiful. But my um, R&D team, husband and wife team, I have a very small group of people in my company uh, for and they have asked me to uh, give them a little bit more time because what's most important about these hitchhiking ghosts is that they're done correctly and they're done nice. I will tell you that I got the certificate of authenticity I designed back and they are, mwah, oh, they're gorgeous. Can you read them? Eh, you need a magnifying glass maybe. I always like to have them fit. So if you got my uh, Jiminy Cricket or you got my stitch, you know they're so this is a little bigger because there's three ghosts in a set, but they're, uh, but it's just beautiful. It's so cool. I did a couple of things I've never done before and I'm really happy. And, uh, yeah, there's it. They're awesome. And then, um, the box, I think you'll really be happy with the box. The whole experience I think you'd be happy with, but it's a matter of, uh, locking down the price, locking down the delivery and locking down, you know, what I what I buy off on because we've come very close. We've come very close. But there's a couple of things I've said, ooh, I'd like this to happen or I'd like that to happen. And now you're working with a persnickety artist that, that wants them to be perfect for you. So when you see it, you experience it. I don't know if I mentioned to you that one of the things that kept us from, because um, this comes, this goes together in my head like watercolor, but, uh, but I, uh, the reason it took two years is because we wanted to be able to have a base that could house uh, the AAA battery instead of a, that little circular battery they use in, I don't know, watches, hearing it. I don't know what they use it for. But it's a pain, in my opinion, it's a pain to find. It's a pain to replace. Maybe it's not, but to me it is. So, so I didn't want to do that. I wanted you to be able to get something simple, easy, which is the AAA battery, right? Everyone knows where they can get them. You can get them for a deal at Costco, et cetera, et cetera. However, that being said, you will get those batteries included in your box. I'm not going to make you go look around for batteries before you get the joy of seeing the, you know, of seeing these, uh, these ghosts illuminate that, you know, don't you find that annoying that you get something and then nobody gives you the batteries. They give you some wonderful uh, cool thing and then they don't give you the battery you know the uh 
uh, lightsaber tongs were like that from Star Wars. You had to find a battery first and just like, oh, God, I got one. And the reason they do that, though, is because if you ship it, see, that's going to be something that I have to work out because I may not be able to send you the batteries because mailing batteries in the mail becomes precarious. So I have to talk with the post office about mailing a battery. And maybe the batteries are, uh, I don't know, we will work something out. Okay, we will get it so that you, you get batteries. But if I'm going to ship it somewhere, the batteries are going to have to be considered because they could damage if you don't uh, uh, explain to people that there's batteries in the mail, this could be bad. So, so even though there are double A and triple A batteries, we'll have to, we'll have to work that out. So, but I'd love to have you have them so you can just pop them in. Or I'm going to say, guys, go get triple A batteries. Cause I can't ship them. I'm not allowed. Cause the post office says no, 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 no. And if that's the case, then I'm going to ask you to go out and get triple A. They're triple A go out, but we'll do that when you see the uh, prototype. And it looks like the art proof will be ready or maybe art proofs will be ready uh, by the latest this coming Friday, a week from today. Okay, that's what we're hoping. A lot of work is going in these, a lot of work, which is why uh, it's a challenge. So, so and look at, I just stayed on Dennis Ritchie's comment. Isn't that funny? Isn't that adorable? Dennis Ritchie is in the house. So there you go. We'll look at a few more of yours and then we'll get started. Hello, thank you for joining us again, Michael. Yes, exactly. Hi, how are you? I hope you are well too. Thank you for joining us. That is so sweet of you. Oh, thank you, Luella. You love that pumpkin show, yes. I'm so glad you do. Write into the Food Network and tell them how much you love it because I would like to do it again. Thank you. In fact, my neighbor walked around the corner <laughs> You know, as we stop on uh, everyone have a great day with Michael, um, uh, it looks freezing on the show. Uh, I will talk about that, that after it's done. I will talk about that after it's done. If you happen to be with me at the time, I was doing Facebook Lives from that farm. They allowed me to do that. They just wouldn't allow me to shoot the area they were filming. And at one point, I shot the weather. If I can find that photograph, I will post it so you can see it. And that will answer your question, Luella, big time. Uh, yes, yes, Michael, that's exactly the case. Uh, mine is, is, is a strong one, but it's, I'm asking it. When you, when you buy a computer, people say, what are you going to use it for? And uh, at the time, you go, oh, I'm going to use it for X, Y, Z. Hello, Cindy. And then, of course, things change as you grow. Oh, Deanna, you're never late. <laughs> Thank you, Gamer T1000. What you might be thinking about is I was a speaker for at risk kids. Maybe you were there, were you? All right, as long as the batteries are not lithium, you can ship them if they are in safe packaging. I just did that with a gift last month. Also, got to see you on the pumpkin carving show. Fun and entertaining. Much is needed. Arlene, thank you. That, I'm going to give this back to you. Thank you very much. Because I am going to do it in their packaging, in their uh, original packaging. That is exactly what I'm going to do. But, you know, the wonderful thing about being an artist and having a wonderful, uh, having a wonderful uh, post office is that I just go over there and talk to the postmaster and say, here's what I'm shipping. Here's what I need to do. Talk to me, talk to me. But thank you for that because I was hoping I could ship batteries to you so you don't have to worry. And if you have not purchased the Hitchhiking Ghosts, uh, don't panic, they're not up yet. And all I ask you to do is reserve a number. There are probably about 20 left off the top of my head, available to reserve, and then we're gonna start a waiting list. But all you have to do is write to me and say, I wanna be on the list, pick a number, I'll send you what numbers are available. Many are, many of the, if you want 13, uh, 33, 99, they're gone. 
but uh, there are other numbers and there's only a hundred in the edition. So uh, get your name on. And then when I say the price and I ask for you to go and pay for them pre-sale, right? So I know how many you guys are really committed. That's when you commit. Okay. Not now. Now you just reserve them. And then if you really think you're going to want one, that's what you're going to do. And then we go from there. Okay. All right. Ask me anything. Let's get started. Topical questions. Bob Iger quit a group led by Governor Gavin Newsom over the delayed reopenings of California amusement parks. Do you think it was justified? Do you understand Iger's decision? How do you feel about the thousands of layoffs and furloughs about cast members and other employees at the end of the company paying for their health insurance? Well, in a word, ouch, right? So let's break this question down. If you're trying to get your point across to someone who doesn't maybe understand. Okay, so we have a governor here who's all about not allowing this pandemic to get out of hand again, right? Now, let's look at our history. And I'm talking about, well, I may be talking about as a country, but basically I'm mostly talking about if you're in California. Every time we've had a holiday in the past, 4th of July, Memorial Day, we have thrown caution to the wind and our numbers have shot up. Okay? So what does that tell you as our officials? We got we got we got to be a lot more careful after Labor Day. We got to wait before we jump up and open things up. Yes, we know you need to go to work. Yes, we need you you, you need to have it opened up more. Yes, we understand. You know, people are getting stir crazy at home. I get it. Believe me. Understand that for someone to, for like Gavin Newsom to show up, I guess it's now twice a week. I was, it was three times a week, but twice a week. And stay composed when you're just trying to get people to wear a mask and social distance must be very frustrating. Okay. If you think he's, if you think he's done wrong as a city official, you got to do what you believe is right. You're not going to please everybody. Okay. First of all. Okay. So let's take Bob Iger. Bob Iger wants what? Disneyland to reopen. So I ask Bob Iger, why did you quit? What does quitting do? How does that help Gavin Newsom to understand why Disneyland needs to open? Why didn't you take your time? And I don't know you really well, Bob. Uh, except for that you knew my father-in-law very well, Keith Jackson. And so I have had the opportunity to, uh, I know you believed in, you know, you used to sit with Keith Jackson as he uh, talked to you about his wisdom. He shared his wisdom with you. So that's how I know you as the daughter, as the uh, daughter-in-law married to his eldest son. But that's how I know you. I've never met you in the Disneyland umbrella. But it seems to me that if Keith Jackson were to be able to talk to you, he would say, why would you leave? When you're trying to get Gavin to understand why Disneyland needs to open and why it's ready. I don't know. That's confusing to me. Okay? I don't know what you would quit. You want to quit because you're angry. But that you leaving, you know. Have you ever seen a movie called The Women? It's amazing. I don't mean the new one. I mean the old one where the girl says, you know, it, it, it's about a woman who finds out her husband is cheating and her mother says, oh yeah, your father did it all the time. But as long as I kept the house and as long as he was discreet, I was cool. Basically, that's the thing. I don't want to spoil it for you, but you, black and white, Norma Shear, make sure you check it out. It's amazing. And uh, one of the girls says, you know, you left him without his defense. You took away his protection. He had a wife. He was just kind of looking for a little, uh, someone to fuss over him a little bit. He would have been gone. You know, you know it, I know it, but you left and you left him vulnerable. Now, some of you may not agree with that, but the point is, Bob Iger, you walked away and now what is Gavin, who does he have to ask? Can you explain more why Disneyland should open? Why amusement parks should open? Okay. He's looking only at the fact that when people group, they don't behave. I've seen it at Walt Disney World. Y'all taking your masks off. 
and doing selfies because you don't want to have the selfie in the mask. I've seen it at Walt Disney World. Don't tell me you haven't done it. And with people you are not living with. So this is what Gavin is looking at. Okay? He's looking at that. You need to be Bob Iger to tell him, I know that. I know that, Gavin. I know they take the selfies off. And, and, and I, I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, we're Disneyland. They sue at a hangnail. Don't you think I'm thinking about this? Don't you think Disney is thinking about this? This is what he could say. And he quits. So personally, I don't know. I don't think it was a good idea. My opinion. Okay? <laughs> I'm broadcasting from my location. So it's my opinion. <laughs> you disagree, we can debate kindly, but not meanly. Okay? Never attack the person. Just talk about the the thing you're debating and do it with consideration. You know, you don't tell a person. I did not say Bob, Bob Iger. I didn't say anything about Bob, Bob Iger, the man. I was saying, I don't think this was a great move because they need, you know, our government needs someone like Bob to understand about Disneyland. Okay. And then there's the thousands of layoffs. And here's the thing about the thousands of layoffs that's really, really sad and really, really hard is it's coming from the tourism side of things. Anything that has to do with tourism, and that's your Disney Cruise Lines, guys, they're in the sights, aren't they? This is rough. This is very rough. I don't know about you, but I ain't getting on no cruise ship. You know? No. <laughs> uh -uh. No, no, no. We have cooties enough as it is, and I've seen cruise ships left out in the water forever. No, 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 no. So this is a drag. I don't even want to fly because it's air, canned air. They may be piping a lot of air in, but a lot of uh, uh, personnel from the airlines is saying getting it out is, uh, you know, is it true? Is it right? Just want to take my time. Just want to wait a little bit. And unfortunately, the airlines are having the same challenges. Okay. So it breaks my heart that there's all of these layoffs and, and furloughs and things that Disney has to do. But when you think about it, they're trying desperately. They are hanging on the edge of a cliff, desperately trying to keep afloat any way they can so that they can eventually open Disneyland at some point. And here's the thing. Hopefully they can. Apparently today at around noon, Gavin is going to address to all of us, Noon Pacific, he's going to talk about um, Disneyland specifically and amusement parks. And I'm dying to hear what he has to say because he knows these people are struggling and suffering. He's not heartless and neither is Disney. Disney is just working their very best to keep afloat. But if you're on the receiving end of a furlough or a layoff, this doesn't really do you much good, does it? You know, in fact, yesterday, one of the most sad stories I saw, besides all of the cast members saying goodbye, I'm going to miss you, which is painful. Yeah. But I saw a woman about the airlines saying the airlines was my dream job. What do I, what do you do after you're fired from your dream job? You know, and uh, it's not going to be this way forever, guys. And I know that Disney will look back to you. I believe this, that they'll look back to you and bring you back. But what do you do in the interim time? You know, especially when uh, unemployment has been not shut down, but suspended a little bit because there's been corruption. <sighs> That's the part that really gets me is, you know, these people who decide to steal and cause problems and take more without a care for other people it's just ouch man you know you're taking the cards you're stealing the there goes my tools i need to put these tools over here because my movement is just too too dramatic today i'm kicking tools off onto the floor but this is the thing this is this is very important this is this is like you know, you're, you've messed up the unemployment because there's so much, uh, uh, they've got corruption. They've got all kinds of problems happening in there. They've shut it down. They've stopped taking applications for unemployment because they've got to clean the house. And what does that do for all of these people? Butt kiss. This is what's awful. 
So yeah, it, it's, it's, and health insurance, well, I can feel for you there. With the Screen Actors Guild, apparently, they're changing uh, my retirement health insurance. So now when I hit six to five, am I, am, I gonna am I gonna have health insurance when my husband retires? Right now I have it through my husband. But I worked my butt off in the Screen Actors Guild, my acting performing union, to get what I've got, my retirement. And now they're telling me they've changed the health insurance. So I am duking it out and fighting for the right to have that. Not having health insurance is bad. And we don't know if the Trump administration should win, if they're going to keep health insurance for everyone. And if they don't, we're in deep trouble, all of us. Okay, because that's just not cool. So we don't know, but we don't know. So all we do is say, you know, vote for the one you believe in and, uh, and whoa, right? So there we go. Oh, and here we are, here. I hope that answered you guys. If not, you know, I'll take a look at the comments at the end and we'll we'll elaborate like I always do. And those of you who go, gosh, I gotta go somewhere, you're welcome to go somewhere. You don't have to stay. I always warn you when I'm gonna go into the comments and answer those, okay? All right. It was announced and confirmed Thursday night that both Donald Trump and his wife, Melania, have tested positive coronavirus. Really? Didn't you just look at this news and go, surprise? Duh. <sighs> you refuse to wear a mask and you refuse to social distance. And now you've got the coronavirus. Am I surprised? No. I'm not surprised. In fact, I am surprised it took so long. But I... They said Donald had it as early as Wednesday morning, and luckily he is the president of the United States so that they announced it to everybody on all news so that anyone who is near him, and we're talking a lot of people, can go get tested. You see, it's not about you. It's not about you wearing a mask to protect you. You are wearing a mask out of respect to protect others. Donald Trump refused to do it. I'm very curious about his spin after dealing with the coronavirus. How is he going to feel? What is he going to say? And honestly, honestly, if he starts saying, you know, I messed up, guys. I should have said wear a mask and social distance. Or is he going to say, I didn't get it because I didn't wear a mask. I got it because of some lame excuse. I don't know. I'm hoping he'll just say, look. I was wrong. I should have worn a mask. I should have social distanced. I, I'm the president. I, people follow what I do and listen to what I say. And wow, I'm sorry. That's, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear that. I don't know if we will, but I'd love to hear that. And uh, he's, I, he, you know, he's, uh, he's in quarantine, as is his wife is in quarantine. A lot more people are popping up with it. You know, it's just... It's just going up and up and up. I think Mike Pence tested negative. I think they, they just said this morning before I, I got on here that Mike Pence tested negative. So he's there to take on the president's duties to help things move forward if Donald gets too sick. But he is in that demographic, guys. You know, it's uh, you got to be careful when you make fun of people who are wearing a mask. God has a sense of humor, and sometimes it's it's not really ha ha funny. It's uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, seriously. I mean seriously. I'm 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 dealing with this this now. Why do I have gremlins every Monday? I don't know. I think God just loves to see me run around going ah, it's Monday, gremlins. He likes to be amused, or she likes to be amused. However you want to say it. God likes to be amused, and and I think I am part of major comedy relief. I think I make him throw himself back in a big laugh. Whenever he wants fun, he just plays around with his comic, his uh, comedy relief, which is me. <laughs> but seriously, I, I, I really, 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 really um, 
want him to understand. They've said, I listened this morning because I, you know how you listen to something the night before and you go, did I listen to that or was that in a vision? And then I realized it was, they were, they're sick and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But what I will wish is that he, he, he gets it enough that he realizes his mistake. I mean, I want him to realize his mistake early. Last night he was lethargic. Donald Trump was lethargic. I hope he, at that point he said, you know, this, this is a, this is a mofo. And I really did. I underestimated it. Wow. You know, with family. Because you don't want to be responsible for, you don't want to be responsible. How can you live with yourself if your child is, it gets really sick because you decided not to wear a mask and your child decided to, to do what you did, you know, or you go and see a grandmother, you know, there was a, there's tons of stories out of Texas where the kids went out and partied and then they came back and their grandparents died because they had the coronavirus and the parent grandparent got it and they had to deal with that. How do you live with that? Wear a mask so you don't have to live with being responsible for bringing it home to your family. So, you know, Donald Trump, if Donald Trump were to have, heaven forbid, get, get really, really sick, that's one thing. But what he's really got to consider as a human being is that what if his children get sick? What if his, you know, what if someone else's children get sick? Because he elbowed or he walked up, he said hello, whatever. You know, this is why you wear a mask and this is why you do the best you can to social distance. This is why you do it. This is why. It's about others, not you. Can you, be a, can you imagine being this woman who was drunk driving and she killed those two kids? You know, at the time, was she even sober enough to realize what she did? And when she sobered up, what kind of state was she in? You know, I can't believe that she had her wits about her and she willingly left. Maybe there was something in there that, that made her do what she, you know, I don't, but she was drunk guys. Alcoholism is a heavy thing and you don't want to wake up and find out you've done this to you, to someone. It's gotta be, it's gotta be tearing her up. And, and, and it's horrible, it's horrible. So you got to watch what you do. You got to start thinking about other people and, and, and not always you, 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 you. I'm not saying all you all are like that, but if you're like that, you know, wearing a mask is not a hazmat suit. They're not asking you to zip up and isolate yourself and have an air conditioner and the suit is a thousand dollars and you better get one because otherwise, you know, you're not going to. No, they're just asking you to wear a mask. And so many of you, I've done these beautifully creative masks. I've been fortunate enough to be on the receiving end of them. I have some great art. I love it. Creative people just go, okay, we're gonna, you know, lemons, make lemonade. It's not that bad. Yes, it's hot and sticky. We are horrible here. We are gonna hit 107 in Burbank or something stupid. So, you know, we gotta wear them. We got to, we got to, we got to. So just do it. Many businesses are putting their logo on the front. I took my dog to the pet salon, you know, so she could have a spa day. And they were all wearing their logo on the mask, you know, the, the pet salon logo. This is clever. You know, it's going to get better if we all do our due diligence and hang in there and be real, okay? Just, just hang in there a bit longer. I know it's rough. Do something. Call someone you haven't talked to in a while. Reach out to someone that you haven't in a while. Send a card, you can do them for free online, but do something nice for someone and you too will feel good. All right, all right. So some others, including many Democrats were upset and feared it would further, this vitriol would further divide the nation. How did you react to the news and how did you feel about the reactions of some people? Here's the thing. I didn't read about the reactions of other people. Okay. I, I deal with my, I'm not, I'm not about, I've told you before, those of you who are new, don't discuss politics on Facebook. You know, don't do it. If you must do it, keep it real. You know, 
don't 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 take one side and say the other side is stupid i don't care which side you're on okay and i don't care which side you're on vote all right i have enjoyed a couple of things my sister sent me a dear young people and it's a bunch of old people using the f word to young people that they better vote they say they voted during the war and they they voted during you know certain things don't don't sit and say you can't vote now it's no big deal vote you know i'm voting by mail i'm voting i'm voting you know and it's hilarious to me it's very funny some people were a little bit offended but i i found it hilarious and the reason i did is because elder el, el, we all know the importance of voting we all do so just vote you know it's coming right to your house don't buy into all of the magma there's ways you can trace your ballot, make sure your ballot gets there, make sure your ballot gets counted. Just do it, okay? Just vote. It's so important. And for many, it's very important on these propositions because these propositions are making me nuts. They are driving me crazy because my father always said, if I'm hearing too much to one side on a proposition commercial, then it could be that's the wrong way to vote. So I want to study. So um, there's a fella here, and I'm going to give him a plug. Let me just go real quick because I just, I'm thinking of this now. Uh, I'm going to go on my phone real quick and I'm trying to go on my phone real quick. My phone has got its own attitude. Okay, I'm going to go here. It's called Propositioned, and it's hosted by KFI's Chris, K-R-I-S, and Carlo, Chris and Carlo, okay? And he has a, we uh, uh, a podcast on various platforms, including iHeartRadio, which is my one that I like to listen to, uh, called Propositioned. And what he does is he brings both sides in to calmly discuss each and every proposition that's up in California. Um, and he may, I don't know, I just heard him speak the other day on the radio and say that it's unbiased. It's just to give you both sides so you can decide which way to vote. And I need that because I'm confused. I'm so confused because a lot of these sound very one-sided and on surface sound like they're fine, but I I've seen that before. Prop 8, guys. Prop 8 had a whole different spin. Our gas tax here in California, a whole different spin. So I want to make sure I study. So vote, study, vote, and vote the way you feel. That is the extent of my um, political thing. Because on Facebook, I'm here to make you feel happy. Not add to the magma of, Ugh. Okay. So I have not heard what other people said. I have not heard what other people feel about this, this Trump getting the virus. I can only talk to you about the Trumps getting the virus and um, say that it was inevitable to happen. He wasn't wearing a mask and he wasn't social distancing. You know, when you poke the dragon, the dragon, do you ever see Game of Thrones? Do you ever see that guy try and poke that dragon? It's one of the best screensavers ever is that dragon just turning to him and opening his mouth. And if it hadn't been for a very quick guy, he would have been a charcoal briquette, a bird matchstick. You don't poke, you don't mock God, okay? Whether you believe it or not, don't do it. Just don't. Donald has proven that right now by getting sick. So now, I want him to realize the error that he has been saying and just be real about it. You know, just be real. You know, I worked with him for years ago. I worked with Donald Trump. So I worked for him years ago. I sculpted a Taj Mahal sign for his Atlantic City uh, casino. So, uh, and he was, uh, he just popped in and said hello and we said hello. We didn't really have a conversation. But the people that, that, that were taking care of me really took care of me. So, so honestly, I just believe that as a, if you are really a thinking human being, then you're gonna come, you know, come up and say, hey man, you know, whoops. 
You know, that's, that's my feeling. So I don't know the reactions of other people. Uh, and I hope they're careful in their reactions and their wishes. Because it's not good to wish ill on another person either, no matter who they are. But uh, this is, this I felt was inevitable. So, yesterday marked several important Disney anniversaries. Walt Disney World, 49 years, which means next year's what? 50 year anniversary. Wouldn't it be great to do something cool for that? As a sculptor, I'm kind of like, what would I do? I kind of like that, what is it called? Spaceship Earth, that big globe in uh, Epcot. Oh, I'm an Epcot fiend. That's my favorite park over there. I can't get it enough. But then my friend John, John E. Johnson, took me to uh, Animal Kingdom so I could ride Pandora, which took the day, guys, because Pandora is always full. Though if, if Animal Kingdom is allowing it to be open and you're only 20%, ride Pandora a million times because when is that ever going to happen again? Um, but that Pandora was amazing when I finally got on it. I didn't feel I needed to ride it more than once. I just wanted to experience it one time, and it's brilliant. It's quite brilliant. Uh, but I love Epcot. It's my favorite. But when I was over at Animal Kingdom, he took me to a restaurant called Yak and Yeti. And I honestly would pay to get into An Animal Kingdom. Full price I would pay to get into Animal Kingdom. Seriously. Seriously. As, as a, I'm serious about this. To eat at Yak and Yeti. Yak and Yeti was probably one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. And I absolutely loved it there. Part of it was because I was with my friend John. And when I'm with you guys, everything is better. Everything is awesome whenever I'm with you guys. But that place is just, uh, it was, uh, gosh, the food was awesome. The people were awesome. We ate at the bar. So oh, it was just great. There were only two of us, so it, it worked. And what a great thing. So I love going over there. But uh, honestly, if you're in the animal kingdom and you can get on Pandora, you know, do it. So, so I'm excited for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. This is, this is exciting. And what do I do to celebrate it? I should do a sculpture to celebrate that. Epcot, 38 years. Well, Epcot's amazing. I was there for the, the 25th anniversary of Epcot. And, uh, and I love that. So the 30, hopefully. Walt Disney Family Museum. Oh! If you haven't been, go. Uh, it's amazing. Experience at each of those locations. Okay, so Walt Disney World. I, okay, here you go. I should have pulled a picture, I'm sorry. I didn't read these questions last night, I was exhausted. The heat is really getting to me. I cannot stand the heat and we were, what, 106, 107? Uh, years ago, I was brought, was flown to, uh, Florida to work on the talking Mickey Mouse head. Now, many of you, if you remember the parades, there was a, there was a Mickey Mouse parade, a parade with Mickey Mouse in it, where he actually enunciates with his mouth. Ha ha! Ho ho! Well, I was one of the people that was at the very ground floor of starting to create that talking Mickey Mouse. However, back then we used a system similar to the big one system that Henson used and so it was a giant box. And they had trouble figuring out how a puppeteer with that giant box, right, could uh, actually make this stuff work. So um, it was put to bed for a while and uh, my poor Dr. Manser is calling me, trying to reach me and uh, uh, I'm broadcasting, so we're not going to pick that up, but I'll call her right after. She's probably got my test results. And look at this. Look what she did. She made the po podcast open up. So it's cool, but doesn't need to talk to me now. Sorry about that. Anyway, so I was flown to do Talking Mickey Mouse, and I was in the back area of Walt Disney World when I was practicing it. And then I had to demonstrate it. You remember, uh, I think it was Hollywood Studios that had the walkway with the glass. And you could watch the animators animate. And you could watch performers kind of work out their routines and stuff. It was like a giant fishbowl mini. Imagineers and uh, animators told me it kind of felt like being in a fishbowl. Some liked it, some didn't. But when I was working with Talking Mickey Mouse, uh, we were in a fishbowl, and because we're performers, we didn't mind. But afterwards, they invited me to go see Walt Disney World, and I hadn't seen 
uh, uh, Walt Disney World and, and the difference in it at all. And so I wanted to, and then I asked if I could also see Epcot. And uh, uh, the first thing about Walt Disney World that I noticed was it's huge. Oh my Lord, it's so big. It's so big. Many of you from, who've seen Walt Disney World first and you come to Disneyland, you go, it's so small. I can see it in a day, you know. But uh, remember, that's where Walt walked. Uh, Walt never got to see Walt Disney World. So for me, having people walk me around and show me around Walt Disney World and seeing the vast uh, expanse of it was phenomenal. It's phenomenal. You have a lot of attractions that are similar to ours. Of course you do. And one of the things that you're getting soon and hopefully you can enjoy is Tron is coming from, you know, they, it was in, it's in China. I've been in Shanghai. Tron's remarkable. You guys are going to be blown away. You're going to be like, oh my God, I got to ride it like a million times. But uh, you are a location in Florida that has the space to do things like Tron. So I'm so excited for you that you have that space. But I was impressed with, with that. Epcot, um, Epcot, I popped out. And the place I love, of course, is World Pavilion. I tend to go, every time I'm in Florida, I want to go to the World Pavilion. I want to eat breakfast in France. I want to have my lunch in Japan. And then my dinner is kind of like, well, where will we go? Maybe we leave the park entirely and go to TGI Fridays because there's some people there that I absolutely love that are servers there that I try and go and see every time I'm there. So the point is that uh, the people are what make it special, but also the existence of, you know, the... The adventures are fun and the it's beautiful there. It's beautiful. Animal Kingdom is glorious. It's fantastic. I wish I had a part of the Tree of Life. I'd love to du duplicate the Tree of Life as a sculpture because I think it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I just would love to have been a sculptor that had my hands in there, you know, because I just, I just love that. And uh, yeah, so, but Epcot is my, Epcot is my jam. I love Epcot. In fact, I went to an event where I spoke and they gave me a tour on a Segway. You know, the thing with the big wheels. If you ever saw the movie Mall Cop, he was all about the Segway. But the big Segway and we did, we, we were brought in early morning when, when everybody was like, you know, watering down the grounds and making sure the plants are all pretty, making sure everything looks cool. And, uh, and we got on Segways and we did a world tour pavilion on Segway. It was just brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. It was so much fun. And um, yeah, the idea of Epcot having people actually from the country they represent is is priceless. It's just beautiful. Uh, I took my husband to the Norway Pavilion because he's Norwegian and he actually got to speak with people from Norway and talk about Norway. This is just before we went. We actually went on a huge uh, Norway uh, experience with uh, his family and it was just wonderful but that's where you can get kind of a taste of your country if you miss it if you're French you can go to France and although it's a it's a different version you know it's our interpretation of France there's French in there so someone from France can talk with the French in French and feel like home what a brilliant idea what a brilliant idea and then I can't remember which park it was that had those lights by that family that does great lights. But they took me to see these amazing Christmas lights. And I took three steps in. And have you ever seen Village of the Damned? I passed out. The lights were too, were sensory overload for me. So when I ended up doing the dopey race where I ran a marathon and we ran through those lights for part of it, I had to, I had to put my visor down and not look. Because there's something about those lights that makes me just zero, zero out. It's too much. It's too much overload for my little brain. So uh, that's some of the things. The races are sensational there. Um, I did the Disneyland half marathon and I did the Dopey. So I did a 5K, next day a 10K, next day uh, half, and then the next day a full. You know, insane. And I did it twice. Yeah, I'm nuts. <laughs> I did the inaugural dopey and then I did the dopey after that. Why I did a second dopey uh, is because a friend of mine who's a runner said she didn't have the confidence if I didn't do it. Yet, let's talk about that, okay? 
I do run walking. So fast for me is a 12 to 13 mile uh, per hour speed where she was doing um, eight or nine, you know, minute mile, eight or nine minute mile. And I am a 12 minute, 13 minute mile as a fast walker. Okay. Which means that she could get through the race, go home, have a shower, get a bite to eat, come back and I'm crossing the finish line. So what was I going to do? What, what, what part gave her the confidence? I don't know. Just seeing me and me saying, you can do it, uh, was it. But the races are always fantastic. The funniest part of the races is that when you are waiting to do the 10K, for example, nine times out of 10, you are in a corral, which is, they, they, they have these things. If you've never run, there's corrals, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thousands of runners come because the Disney medals are off the chain. Beautiful. And uh, the 10K is always the most interesting because the medals, I just think the medals for the 10K are wonderful. So we're waiting to go. I'm in, I'm in corral like G or something. And the A's and B's go. They're the fastest runners. Well, by the time you are stepping up to go, A's and B's are finished. <laughs> You hear the fireworks go off as the winners come across and everything. And it's just hilarious. You're still standing, getting ready to leave, and they're all coming back. So, but a Disneyland race and the beautiful thing about doing it in Walt Disney World and uh, all of that is that they have plenty of on-site area for you to run. So they don't get overly, uh, they have to finish at a certain time, but, you know, it would go all day if they didn't. But it, the way it is here in Anaheim, you have to stop at a certain time because the city of Anaheim was getting upset, which is why I find it amusing that the city of Anaheim is finally realizing that their bread is buttered on the Disneyland side, but I digress. So anyway, so that's some of the best memories. Most of the time when I'm running and walking, I'm about helping other runners get across. People ask me what my time is. I was going to beat my time one time. Uh, my half marathon, I was going to come in 30 minutes earlier and I met a girl that I had seen at the start and she had injured her leg and she was going to quit. And I can't have that guys, you know that. So I, we were at mile 10 and for those of you who don't know what a half mar marathon is, it's 13.1 miles. So she was at 10 going on 11 and wanted to stop. Oh no, 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 no. Au contraire, mon ami. So I stood with her and I said, we can do this. We'll do this together. And we chatted the whole time. I told her stories. I did whatever I could to keep her not think about this leg that was bothering her. And here's the surprising thing. I did not get a, a, a better time, okay? But she did. So yay for her. She came in under three hours. And I, of course, was, you know, didn't, I came in three hours. I was looking to do it in two and a half. But it didn't happen. And so what? You know, it feels much better to help someone else. You do something nice for someone else. This was a race that meant a lot to her. Not that it didn't mean a lot to me. But this is what I like to do. This is what gives me, I want to help you get across. All right? I want to help you get across. If, if you've always dreamed of doing a marathon, a half marathon, a 5K, a 10K, then I want to be there to cheer you on or help you get across. And that's how I got how hung up on this whole thing anyway. I had a very dear friend named Rachel. I have a very dear friend named Rachel Radovinsky, and she was running. Now, unfortunately, she hasn't been able to do that because she, her knees just have said, no, thank you. You're not doing this anymore. It's too bad because she loved doing these races. But uh, her dream was to do a half marathon, and we, we signed up. I had no running shoes. I hadn't run in seven years. So these are the memories, the people, is what I'm saying. Yeah, indeed. I know, I know. We've gone about, what, just under an hour? That's me. Okay, other items in the news you might want to discuss. A jetpack for paramedics. Have you seen this? Oh, my gosh. It feels so, uh, uh, mm. what am I trying to say? Give me a minute and I'll say it. Um, wow. Wow. It is so exciting. It is so Johnny Quest. It is so uh, 
Uh, oh my gosh, it's just, oh gosh, it's, oh. Did you see it? If you haven't seen it, Google it. Watch this paramedic as he practices going up and over terrain to rescue people trapped on mountains. He says it saved 35 minutes. Of course it did. Hiking up a mountain or boop. It's phenomenal. See, these are the stories that I love. I love these upbeat, uplifting stories in 2020. This is why I watch KTLA 5 it, here it, locally in, in California because I absolutely adore. Download the app, guys. This is a great news channel. Um, they always do the fun, cuddly, sweet stories. You know, and there was a TikTok, Liz Reed, always uh, from my patron page. She's always talking about TikTok and I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But the other day, uh, somebody sent me the most adorable TikTok that, of course, exploded. And it was a little um, dog huddled in the back seat in his seatbelts. OK, because they have these great seatbelts for your animals. If you don't have one, you should have one. They're amazing. And the dog was in and he was sad. And here's why. If you have a pet and you don't know about this, I didn't. Thank you to Gary Shingold, wife, uh, wife, <laughs> whoops, husband of Anita Shingold. And he has a lovely little uh, toy poodle named Le uh, Reese. And every Sunday he takes Reese to Starbucks to get what's called a puppy whip. Okay, Starbucks gives you a little cup with some whipped cream in it for your dog. My little dog Rocket goes bananas every time she sees a Starbucks. How smart is this as a marketing tool? And so I, I don't think it was she called this lady called it puppy whip on the on the TikTok, but it's so adorable because she went to get her dog. She made the mistake of telling her dog, and how many have made this mistake of telling your kids? She told this little dog they were going to get a puppy whip or a puppy something. And, and the line was too long, so she didn't do it. And the dog was just like this. And he was all in the seat, all in the seat like this. And she was saying, baby, the line was too long. I'm sorry. I can't get you a puppy whip. And the dog was just like, It was adorable. It was so adorable. It made me want to tell her to turn the car around and get this dog a puppy with. And you know, when you make the mistake of telling your children something and then you abort it, how sad they get. So sometimes it's best not to tell them until you're sure you can actually deliver. But this, this video of this dog gave me such joy. I keep talking about it. It was so doggone adorable that, uh, that that's the thing. So, um, so the jetpack for paramedics just made me feel like we were in the 21st century because all of a sudden, which also is interesting because you remember a few weeks back that, that the airline said they saw a guy in a jetpack. And then it was like, no, 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 because nothing happened in the ground. Well, maybe he did. I'm not saying it's a paramedic, but here's this paramedic flying around in this jetpack. So, wow. It, it was just cool. It was just seriously, seriously cool. Um, Hocus Pocus wine. Have you seen this? It's sold out. But it, it's in cans and it's got all the characters from Hocus Pocus on it. In time for Halloween, they said. But of course, I was late. It's completely sold out. They don't know when they're going to get more cans in. And the cans are adorable. So if you're a Hocus Pocus fan um, and you're a wine fan or you're a Hocus Pocus fan and you're not a wine fan, you're just going to keep them with the liquids up on the, on your shelf. You know, they're adorable. I should have pulled a picture because they are so, 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 so cute. Uh, wait, maybe I can pull it up on my phone for you. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, uh, what? Oh no. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, let me stay focused. Apparently, okay, so I'm looking here with you guys and all of a sudden, um, Rick Moranis ends up being an unprovoked victim. Rick Moranis got an attack in Manhattan. He was attacked. 
So that's breaking news. Um, I hope he's okay. You know I worked with him on a couple of films. So I'll probably reach out and say I hope you're okay. But that just came from my friend. Um, someone doing the knockout game. What's the knockout game? Oh, goodness. Oh, dear, dear, dear. This is just... And then I'm being told that, uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of stuff. My doctors are all calling and saying, you've got this that's got to work and that that's got to be fixed. And, eh, you know. So what I was really going to show you, though, was I was going to show you these wines. Hocus Pocus wines. They're seriously cute, if I can find them. Etsy is talking about the seltzers, but I was looking for the wines. And then there's some incredible Hocus Pocus masks, too. But uh, let me see if I can find them. For you. There they are. Here we go. Yay. I'm going to turn this and make it large so you can see. There they are. Uh, uh. aren't those amazing guys aren't they cute they're little cans and they're all of these right here I would uh, you know I would have had my iPad Ellen's writing to me um, I would have put them on my iPad if I had the balance of forethought to do that but I didn't today life's crazy but I think you you know they'd be fun to have aren't they cute would you just love to be someone that has your face on a wine can I don't know maybe not but I thought that was cool I thought that was very cool anyway hocus pocus wines again a positive story during a uh, uh, a downy a downy a downy kind of event and crack teeth crack teeth yes indeed so dentists have reported that many people are going in because of crack teeth why does this interest anybody me especially, because my husband has a cracked tooth. Why? They think because of COVID-19, people are grinding their teeth at night. And so uh, I just couldn't believe that my husband is like the many that ran into this. And they're in the, he's in the process of getting it fixed. But uh, bear in mind, guys, that at night you might be gnashing your teeth and pushing too hard because of your frustration from... Um, from COVID-19 or anything that's happening in your life. Maybe you've been home too long or whatever, or, uh, you know, in the case of my hairdresser, he's worried about his mother who lives in another state and he doesn't want to fly. So he's wants to go out and see her, but he doesn't know if he can make the logistics work. And my heart reaches out. I'd like to actually go on the road trip with him, but uh, I've got my husband at home to consider. And so we're, it's all about, yeah, but, yeah, but, and we don't like saying, yeah, but, do we? Some of you may want to say, yeah, but, but I don't like to. I, where there's a will, there's a way. But in this situation, it's more, it's about so many more than myself that I have to be a lot more, I got to do more, more due diligence. Yes. Um, so there you go. Uh, next question. Any update, video, or share about your hitchhiking ghosts? I really thought with my hitchhiking ghost, I was going to be able to show people my art proof number two, but unfortunately I'm not able to do that. And why? Because, um, because, uh, my R and D team needs more time and I am a small. So when you, when I say team, my team is two people. Okay. My R and D team is two people. I have four people I work with in my Terry Harden Designs, okay? Uh, Terry Harden Designs consists of two painters and a mold maker. And uh, it might be three painters and a mold maker because sometimes I, I pull in a third painter. But basically the way it works is I have no employees other than myself. I simply bring artists together and we work on something and then they're free to go out and do whatever they want in the interim time when I don't have anything for them to do. We all like this because it works so well for us um, and for me because I am a small company and being a small company, it, uh, it doesn't behoove me to have people on a payroll. 
besides, I'm not that kind of a person. I'd much rather consider it a collaborative effort as a pose. And we talk frankly about how they want to weigh in. Some of them will take a thing that we made to bring the price down of their work and others will not. The other thing about them is that they insist on being paid regardless of whether or not I have released the, the product or not. So that means uh, a lot of the money is coming out of my pocket and uh, that is challenging during COVID-19 because none of us wants to end up being cash poor if this keeps going, correct? So we never know what's going to happen, you know. I'm sure the people of the airline industry and of the Disney industry did not expect this kind of a, a backlash to occur. So um, so this is what they they insist upon, and I have to make sure that I, I have this available. So update is that we are taking a little bit longer because the the prototype is, I'd say, 90% there, but we're still 10% a couple of things I made tiny changes on because I want them to be what they're like, okay? They're awesome. Also, the certificate of authenticity is sweet. Oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, it's because my drawing has improved. My sketching has gotten a heck of a lot better. So I decided to do this one a little bit different, a little special, and I think you're all gonna love it. Um, I also created a sticker uh, that I'll tell you more about later that will be used if this because what okay so what my job is while my R&D team is doing R&D figuring out how to illuminate figuring out how to package not package it as for your experience that's my job so my job is to create the experience if you remember Groot or you remember Oswald the Lucky Rabbit I work very hard to make sure that the package from the time you pull it out of the hard box and you see the package that the experience begins, it unfolds and gives you that experience. So in the Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, I designed a tribute to Diana Waller. I also had a small certificate of authenticity. I had a black box with a golden bow and striped paper. All of that has to be figured out. All of that has to come from yours truly. This is work. This is a lot of work. This is a lot of hours because I am shopping boxes. I am figuring out what box I like, how I like it, what's gonna happen. One of the things that took me two years, and I mentioned this on, uh, I may have mentioned this earlier, is the battery situation. I don't want you without batteries, and I worked really hard to make sure that the ghosts, when they illuminate, will get their power, uh, the pieces will get their power from, double, from AAA batteries, not one of those little tiny circular pain in the butt to get batteries, okay? I have a client who says they're just as easy, but no, 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 no. We're not gonna do that to you. We want you to be able to go anywhere to get these batteries, but of course, I wanna be able to send them to you so that you don't have to look for them so you can get the entire experience unfolding. But this is what I'm talking about. You don't sell a product, you sell an experience. If you really wanna do something right, think about creating an experience, a, yeah, an experience. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to show you one ghost, and uh, I'm going to let you take a look at my lovely uh, Tigger mug with my tea in it. There he is. I love this mug. Um, it's gotten all stained from a lot of tea, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, so I think you guys saw Ezra, so I will show you Phineas, Professor Phineas. This is a rare situation. I showed all of them on my Patreon page, and if you want to see more, you know to go there, don't you? Don't you? Go there and be a part of it. There it is. Um, okay, so uh, Phineas... One of the things I'm going to tell you right now that is amazing is that Phineas still exists because once molds are made, a lot of times the pieces inside the molds, the daddy, if you will, get destroyed. They get lost. They get broken. They, uh, they just don't survive the mold making process. So um, 
that's the way that is. So we're going to cut the camera four here so you can see him. There you go. Here he is. And I, what happened is my mold making team, bless her, my mold maker, he was able to uh, help Phineas and Ezra so far survive. Gus survives. We're in a big, happy, happy place, okay? So here is uh, the hitchhiking ghost, Professor Phineas, and I'm going to try and move him in so he's in focus a little bit. He's still a little soft, isn't he? But we'll do our best. One of the things about these cameras is they autofocus. Ooh, that looks better. There we go. That's a little better. So here is the daddy. Who's your daddy? This one. Okay. So here's the daddy sculpture. And um, he, he survived. So what are you looking at here? What do I want to show you here? is I want to show you these lines. I did this a little bit on my Patreon page, but this shows that he is the daddy by these lines that you see along here, okay? So one of the nice things about people collecting, one of the people who collected my original piece is Nicolas Cage. He, I did a 15 inch tall Chernabog and he bought the Chernabog clay, uh, it was a wax, and they had these lines on it and then he got the original drawing with it and he bought it from Disney for over $6,000. They are not cheap, but they tell a story, okay? They show how my mold maker made a decision as to how he was going to do the mold. So if you take a look here, and I'm gonna use one of my tools, it's a little easier as a pointer. If you take a look right here, you see that he may have thought that right down here was the way he was gonna go to do a two-part mold. But then he changed his mind and he went over here and then he went down the bag. And then if I push him back just a little bit, you'll see that he went across the front of the shoe. You see here how he didn't take the whole shoe in. He took this part of the shoe. So shoe up, 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 up. He felt that was a better direction along the air here and up in here. He thought that was a better direction to do for a two-part mold. We do the molds out of silicone, which is a flexible rubber, very expensive, but really worth it to get all the detail, okay? So this is Chavant clay. I've mentioned that before. I use Chavant. I love Chavant. However, this particular Chavant has gotten a little bit soft, so I'm gonna have to call the company and talk to them about the softness of it because it, it was a little challenging for me to work with this time. And I'm thinking like Roma Plastilina, if you've ever worked with Roma, uh, sometimes their clay batches are too soft. I may have to either go up a level or uh, ask them what's going on with their with their clay size. But anyway, as you look at him, you can see he has a really nice feel to him. I put him in the cape because uh, you guys said you don't have many ghosts in the cape. So I took the liberty, that's me, of putting him in the cape. And I also wanted him to look moving and He's not going to be painted. He's going to be, he's going to illuminate. So what's going to happen is he's going to be uh, translucent and he's going to have a little bit of color put in so you can see the features because the idea is to look good when the lights are on and the illumination device is off and then he looks good with the illumination on and the lights on and then finally when you turn the light off, he looks cool too. So I just thought you would like to have a rare, like I said, on the Patreon page, we uh, got to see both and we talk at more at length about this process, but I just wanted to give you a sneak peek about it. And it was really nice of my, um, it was really, really nice of my mold maker to do this for me, to put him in these little, these little globes. But uh, I pay him what he's worth. So, you know, when you do that, you get little, nice little special things like this and um the thing is guys that uh that uh if someone were to buy these they're extremely rare and so that's why someone like Nicolas Cage was was buying it he saw it at Disneyland at the gallery the Chernabog and he fell in love with it because he knew what it was 
as he collects a lot of these things. He collected, he loves uh, ground, um, he loves demons and dragons and stuff like that, and he bought that one, and yay me to get to say that he bought it. Guillermo del Toro uh, actually had me build something for him too, but the original clays were lost. So that's what I'm talking about, that stuff. I have a few things that, that survived, but uh, a lot of times these things disappear and they're lost. So, so uh, back to my Tigger Cup. If I were to cut to camera three, one of the challenges I'm having in this room is that it's very, very warm. And if I cut to camera three, you can see out my window how bright it is. You can also see Groot. Hello, Groot. Uh, how bright it is. It's because they we replaced the fence uh, between us and my neighbors and uh, they cut my bougainvillea down. My bougainvillea is there and it's blocked the pathway, which is good because it's got all these thorns. But I wanted to block that window with its beauty and then it cuts back the sun and also is beautiful as well. So uh, that's the challenge I have with uh, this sunlight coming in on my art table. It just, you see the sun right here, it's just really harsh. So I have to be careful what I set on that table if I'm using it as a table and not as a drawing area. And then also it can get very, very hot. So it's a little challenging to cool down. But before I know it, nature's going to take over and my bougainvillea will cover my window and then life will be great. I know you didn't ask a question about my window, but there you go. So a lot goes into making the hitchhiking ghosts. A lot goes into making them the way I want them. But I will tell you that they look, when you turn the lights off and you turn the illumination on, it looks like a little ghost is floating on your shelf. Yeah, yeah, if you do it right, and I will demonstrate that once it's done, it looks like a like the ghost is appearing. It does not. It's not a lit thing with acid reflux. It's not. Uh, it's not a light in the belly, guys. It's. It's a. I wanted it to look like a specter. Okay. I wanted you to feel that they were right. They were appearing. They were materializing. They were illuminating. It wasn't just like you know, hello, lights on, lights off, lights on, lights off. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, so this is this is my thing. All right, this is why I only do about two pieces a year, because I really dig into the way I want them to look cool. I want them to look cute. And if you have not seen any of them, uh, hit me in the questions, and I'll make sure that I have some to show you next time. You know, many are sold out, but I still have Jiminy Cricket. You know, I still have my Jiminy Cricket. He's still around if you like Jiminy, um, and stuff like that. Okay. We all know you're a great sculptor. You do? <laughs> uh, but have you ever sculpted Rice Krispie Treats or cakes? Is there something that interests you? Yes! I would love to try a cake. I have not done a cake. I did a cookie and won, um, and won a, uh, a $50 gift certificate. So that was cool. I made a puppeteer. Of course I did. <laughs> um... I'd love to sculpt in Rice Krispie Treats. What I have to be careful of is that I love Rice Krispie Treats. I don't want to be eating more than I'm sculpting. You know what I mean? And uh, this to me, I remember when I first saw a cake battling uh, or Halloween Wars. A friend of mine was on Halloween Wars. And I saw them sculpting in this Rice Krispie Treat. And I just went mad. I went crazy. I thought, oh my gosh, how fun is that? But I also know Rice Krispies is one of my favorite cereals. And also, oh my gosh, just, I just got to be good. I got to, I got to be really full and not eat more than I sculpt. And I should start small. Maybe I'll, I'll do something and film it. You guys can see me sculpting Rice Krispie Treats. But I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them. And uh, I would love to do that. Uh, cakes I have not done yet. I have a friend who, who's an amazing little cake baker. He's a pastry chef. Uh, many of you contributed to his college fund. He had a little extra balance there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, I would love to do that. One of the things that's really fun, if you like to sculpt pumpkins and you've seen the pumpkin show, 
uh, Outrageous Pumpkins, which airs this Sunday again, um, then then is, is cheese. So I met a wonderful young lady who is a cheese sculptor. And she told me what she loved about sculpting cheese was that she could eat the shavings. So I've done a couple of little pieces out of cheese. It's kind of interesting. But you have to be very careful because you have to make sure your hands are seriously, seriously clean. Or you can, or the cheese reacts to the oils in your fingers and leaves marks. And then it doesn't look very appealing, as you can imagine. But uh, very, very impressive, these, these cheese sculptures. If you Google it, some of these cheese sculptures are really cool. In fact, when they do Outrageous Pumpkins again, and I'm saying it in a positive way because I believe the show will do another season, I hope. Uh, they should look for look to cheese sculptors because I think the cheese sculptors could translate to a pumpkin very easily. But cheese sculptors are yeah they 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 I I met this just darling lady and we just chattered away about but she let me try a little bit she gave me a little block to play with you know same tools but the tools have to be super clean so unlike the tools that I use for pumpkin sculpting that I can also use for clay sculpting they can kind of crisscross. You have to have a dedicated tool for cheese. So, um, you know, because that, that tarnishing or whatever that can happen with your tools, which doesn't affect your clays and doesn't affect your pumpkin, but will affect the look of the cheese. So the cheese is amazing. It's a, it's an amazing thing to try. And if, but yes, I would love to do that. I would love to, I mean, I'll, I love to sculpt new things all the time. I'm always playing in something. In fact, um, if you've heard of an amazing puppeteer, he has a huge uh, YouTube channel. Of course, I follow him, Barnaby Dixon. Barnaby Dixon uh, does this cute, amazing little bird. His hand, his puppets are, you know, you may have seen him in, uh, in uh, Blacklight. He does these little dancing critters and stuff. He talked about a material that I used as a kid but had not used it again because of its flexibility. And I thought, oh, I want to pull some more of that out. And, and practice and try that with puppet characters. Um, I I want to try one of his characters, you know, just because it looks, it, it's incredible. But he has no worry about me duplicating anything that he does. I My love is the sock and will always be the sock. So Barnaby, yes, safe. Uh, but I do like the idea of that material because I have a couple of ideas I want to use it for that my, that have not, I haven't been able to execute well and quite honest. I had forgotten about that material. And when Barnaby talked about it, I was like, ah, note to self, I know this stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I love all kinds of new materials and, and it's very exciting. Uh, let's see, after your story about Ward Kimball, let me look at the time, yeah, we're doing good. After your story about Ward Kimball and eyeglasses, some people want to hear about conversations you may have had with other legends. Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, Mark and Alice Davis, Blaine Gibson, Marty Scalar, Rolly Crump, Existentio, Bob Gurr, and Tony Baxter with a question mark. Okay, so first of all, I met Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson when they signed my book. That's about as far as we got. We really didn't have a long conversation. I did get to have a really nice night conversation with uh, uh, the Sherman brothers. That was cool. Alice Davis on the side. Kind of sounds like a really great meal, doesn't it? The Sherman Brothers with Alice Davis on the side. <laughs> and uh, and it was fantastic. I'm just getting that light out of the way. Uh, it was fantastic. It was beautiful. Okay, so let's start. Ward Kimball. These are my inner, these are my uh, Ward Kimball celebration glasses. Because I, I liked Ward Kimball an awful lot. We, we spoke very briefly off and on. But Ward was someone who shared who had, was like me, had no catalytic converter on his mouth. And you got to love somebody that's just like you sometimes. Well, maybe sometimes you don't, but you do. He adored and loved trains. And uh, and up until the day he died, he loved trains. And so that's why I did the cachet with him and Walt, because Ward meant a lot to me, as does Walt. And Ward meant a lot to Walt. And uh, I just love the idea of these the glasses he wore. So when I found these glasses, I thought, yay, I'd love to do that. Now people say it's hard to imagine me in my regular glasses. And uh, the, um, 
the outrageous pumpkin people said too much. They they thought that there was just too much in that. So I wore my uh, work glasses, which are these. And these are the ones that look more like my glasses in my logo. So these are for appearance. And if I'm judging, the other thing that's nice about these while doing the judging for Outrageous Pumpkins is they do not have that uh, transition in them. You know, they transition from light to dark. So when you go outside, you don't have to worry about sunglasses. These transition, okay? So uh, when I have these, these do not. And so when I'm doing a show, you don't all of a sudden not see my eyes, which with transitioning glasses, you've got the producers going, Terry, your glasses, take your glasses, take your glasses. So I had these actually made um, for things like the show so that I could wear my glasses to see detail. And uh, they didn't stop down. So I don't know if they'll allow me to wear these glasses. And if I do, I may have to buy, you know, get a pair that doesn't transition so that you can see my eyes. Because it doesn't look great to have someone, you know, as a judge, have, you know, sunglasses and being all cool, you know, like that. It's like, it's crazy. So we don't do that. But, uh, but yeah, so I loved Ward Kimball. So every time I look at these, they're not actually copying Ward Kimball, but uh, they are... Uh, they are reminiscent. And also of Iris, if you've seen the famous designer woman who has the big jewelry, and she's just so amazing. Her stuff is amazing. Iris, uh, it makes me think of her too. So, um, but mine are different. I didn't want to copy them. I just wanted to be influenced by them. And that's the difference, right? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Mark and Alice Davis. Okay, Mark and Alice Davis. Mark Davis... Uh, the, the thing that was great for me as an Imagineer was that Mark Davis and many of the nine old men were still around. Yes! And so I got to meet a bunch of them. Mark Davis was one of them, one of the most influenced and in, influential people in my life while I was there. He's a very, very sweet man. And then later after he passed, so here's the thing. I created a rose float for the uh Pasadena Tournament of Roses with the city of Burbank. I was a designer. I won the award. I won the right to do the design. They picked my design, basically. And what happened was that... Uh, is my book here? I think my book is here. But anyway, I, I can show it to you at some point. Anyway, as it turned out in 1996, for the 1996 Tournament of Roses, Mark Davis was one of the float judges. I had no idea. And in he comes, and he sees me, and I see him, and we're like, what? It was great. Terry, Mark. So he was a judge. And then on top of that, Kermit the Frog was the master of ceremonies. So it was a great year for Terry Harden, I think, because I had the Muppets as master of ceremonies, Kermit himself, and then I also had Mark Davis as one of the judges. Did not make a difference. There are four judges sometimes five, sometimes only three. It varies, but he wouldn't like it just for me. I mean, he's the one who taught me, you know, you judge the work. The person could be lovely, but you got to judge the work. And he liked it. So that was cool. That was one of my big things was a surprise visit from Mark Davis as a judge for the Pasadena um, Tournament of Roses. And then Alice Davis. So you all know that I'm doing this chess set with Roly Crump. Well, on this this excursion that I was going on to talk to these icons in Disney history, I was I was brought with my friend Kendra Trahan. She is now King, but at the time her last name was Trahan, and then it was Reed, and then now it's it's Kendra King King Reed. Anyway, Kendra is amazing, amazing author, amazing young lady. Someone else that I said, just do it too, and she did. So I'm very happy to have had that. She, she wrote a beautiful book called The Disneyland Detective, and then she went on to write a few others, and then Disney copied her. Isn't that cool? Sometimes when Disney copies you, it's very flattering. Sometimes it's, you know, but they did. And um, anyway, Kendra uh, is, a, is, a, is a fantastic lady, and we went to see Alice Davis at her home to have lunch. And I wanted to do... Uh, small world dolls the way Alice wanted them done. And I kept pitching this idea to her and pitching this idea. 
But she kept saying, no, she did not want to make Disney angry. She kept thinking, you know, if I do that with you and we don't get clearance or anything, you know, I, I just wanted to be, she didn't want to. But she loved me. She thought I was a, a fun, quirky, wonderful, silly person. She had known about me through her husband, Mark, but it was the first time she and I actually met for real. I had been sending her my sculptures. Any sculpture that Mark designed, I would automatically send Alice a copy of as a thank you. So she got my Tinkerbell map and she got my Maleficent that I did when I, and both of those were done for Disney to be sold at Disneyland here in Anaheim. So I'm at her house and I asked her politely, and if you've heard this story before, I apologize, but many of you have not. Uh, I asked her if I could use, you know, where her bathroom was, okay? And she and Kendra, we were all having tea. It was lovely. And she had this beautiful, adorable little dog in a little dog bed that slept nearby as the three of us sat in this beautiful room and talked about her African art, which she collected, and many other things. And uh, I went off to the bathroom. So after probably a good 30 minutes, she began to wonder what had happened to me. <laughs> she was afraid I fell in or I got hurt or something because there was no Terry. <laughs> Where is that Terry? And uh, she knocked on the door and I said, oh my goodness. And she says, are you all right, dear? And I said, Alice, what the heck? Inside the bathroom was every love letter that Mark Davis had sent to her to court her. How do you go out of a bath? I mean, come on guys, really? How do you leave any room where you see Mark Davis and Alice, uh, people like this before they were the, the power couple, right? These were all of the letters, love letters, illustrations. He did little drawings and he did, oh, if you've got the book that Alice put out about her husband, she was kind enough to include some of these in there because at that time I begged her to include it. She was doing the book at the time. I said, please include some of these. I know, I please, these are so, this is my favorite thing in here. This is my favorite thing. Are the love letters from him to you? Oh my gosh. You know, how can I come out? But I did, I, I finally got out. I, read, I, I was in there because I was reading every single, he wrote a lot and every single love letter. Oh, just, ah! you know, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. I was just, ah, it was wonderful. And she smiled a very sweet smile. And she said, oh yes, I forgot. You know, like, right, you did. But uh, it was awesome to be at her house and to see these letters. It, it just, they were just priceless. They were just oh, so doggone cute. So sweet. Everything that he did. Everything that he wrote. Uh, Blaine Gibson, as you know, was the one I wanted to meet. He was my path, you know. There's someone in your life that you say to yourself, gosh, it would be great if only I could meet. Clint Eastwood is my new one. Not my new one, but I've been wanting to meet Clint Eastwood for quite some time now. And the main reason is to take him to lunch and just talk to him about movies like The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, which I love. Love it. Gosh, I love that movie. Um, and it was one of the first that he did. And I got to talk to Eli Wallach, who plays Tuco in this film. And the conversations I had with Eli were just so precious that it made me even want to meet Clint Eastwood more. So uh, I wanted to meet him. But when I was a young girl and I was writing the... Uh, 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 the river cruise, the, the jungle cruise, I found out it was Blaine Gibson who had done all the sculptures. And then when I was hired by Disney and moved to the sculpture department, I was in Blaine Gibson's cubicle. Ah! Uh, <laughs> I was in Blaine Gibson's cubicle and uh, Disney didn't have anything for me to do right away. They said, uh, get yourself situated. You can go here, get the tools you need. You can go here. Uh, familiarize yourself, uh, you know, take it easy. We'll have something for you to do in a little bit, but right now, and on, you know, here I am sitting in the cubicle. Wow. <laughs> Breathe, pinch, you know, talking about your dream job. Uh, and over here was a series of books of, of, of 
of notebooks. And when I pulled one out, it was all of Blaine's, Blaine Gibson's studies on how to do. So it was his process doing uh, the elephants, the hippos, my favorite thing at Jungle Cruise, which is the the uh, expedition that is getting doink, doink by the rhino. That's my favorite. I love that so much. Um, but anyway, it had the clays. It had him working on the clays. It had him figuring out the doing the research. It had him standing with elephants. It had him talking with various peoples, touring. It was like, and I just was going like this. Just loved it. And then a little angel. This is what I'm talking about. Louis Garcia. This is a name to remember. Louis Garcia, an amazing human being. And he is just... I, Louis heard that I had never met Blaine in person and I went to a convention where I was doing signings and I was sitting next to um, trying to remember now her name I'll get it this is what happens when you're 63 sometimes it pops in and sometimes it doesn't but uh, I was sitting between some other artists and it was just going down the line. And then Louis said, I have someone for you to meet. And there he was, Blaine Gibson. And I, uh, if you look at my page, the Terry Harden page, it's me and I'm holding hands with Blaine Gibson. It's a red letter day for me, guys. It's like, oh my God. And he looked at my artwork. Here's another red letter day for you as an artist. If you have an artist that you absolutely have admired everything they've ever done, Blaine Gibson, uh, and they took a look at your work and they're holding it in their hand and they're saying, this is incredible. You are really very talented. You take that to your grave, don't you? And it was just so magical. And on top of that, he was with Harriet Burns. So I got to meet Blaine Gibson and Harriet Burns and then Louie takes everybody to dinner and I got to sit with them and chat at dinner about researching, about sculpture, about the experiences that he had sculpting all the presidents because he was the president sculptor and uh just just phenomenal uh, opportunity to ah <sighs> yeah it was magical for him to be holding my work in his hands and saying how amazing it was that's when you feel successful when someone you've admired all your life and you've studied them and you follow them and they're the ones that make you keep going and Blaine did. I would look at Blaine's work and I would hear Blaine speak on Wonderful World of Disney or in a newspaper because there was no internet. Did I mention that? I had no internet. Um, <laughs> this is still an enigma to me. What is this? Really? What happened to this kind of phone? Anyway. Um, so basically, yes, it's, uh, pardon me, it's, uh, it was just uh, wonderful, wonderful. Marty Scalar, I'm just going to go through these guys. I hope you don't mind. Um, Marty Scalar, Marty Scalar was my boss's boss, okay? So you got Tony Baxter in this list and you got Marty Scalar in this list, okay? So Tony Baxter was my immediate boss. He is the one that I actually... Well, I had Skip Lang, who was in Rockwork. That's where I started out, was Rockwork, which meant we designed and created the uh, out exteriors of things like Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, uh, the castle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The exteriors, sometimes the interiors. Splash Mountain Tokyo did a lot of interior work, uh, but it's called the Rockwork Division. It's kind of used loosely. Nowadays, they do it differently, but at the time, we hand-sculpted everything. Believe me, we did. And um, so I saw Dragon's Lair. I was told by my supervisor, Skip Lang, hey, Skip, how you doing? Um, that they were going to just use, and Paris, they were just going to have a stone dragon and go underneath the castle to get to point A to point B, much like we do here at Disneyland. And does uh, Disney World have a hub? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, anyway, Disneyland has a hub. You've got Mickey and Walt holding hands. And then everywhere you go, you go Adventureland, Tomorrowland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, et cetera, et cetera, right? Well, in Paris, it can rain and snow a lot. So they gave you this under path. In fact, if you hear Liz Reed talk about it on many of her uh, Facebook channels, and Michelle Young as well, and many people who are from the UK who love Disneyland Paris, 
they will explain to you that there are a couple of places where Paris has indoor uh, experiences because of the weather. So this is how Sleeping Beauty's Castle occurred. And then they put a dragon underneath. But when I heard it was going to be a stone dragon, I was like, what are you, out of your mind? What are you, crazy? <laughs> and that's when Skip told me I had to go before Tony Baxter. And I didn't know who Tony Baxter was. I was like, who is this fella? Well, fast forward, Tony Baxter saw my passion, was impressed by my passion, and gave me Dragon Slayer to create all by my little self. The downside was that when it went to Paris, it had to go into the hands of a man because Disneyland didn't want to have a woman trying to oversee the men out in the field, uh, directing them how to sculpt uh, Dragon's Lair. So I have worked with men a lot before in the film industry, but Disney just didn't want to do that. They wanted to go the quickest point between A and B. They didn't want to have to do like an animator does, have some cool things in between. Didn't want that, that thing. But so I said, well, if... You have to choose a man, let me choose him. And uh, I chose, uh, many of you know, the amazing Matt McKim. So I asked if Matt McKim could oversee the inside and Matt McKim did and it's brilliant. If you've been there and you love it, it's because Matt uh, did, did, did real justice to my work and uh, I love him for it. Um, but anyway, so uh, Tony Baxter, that's how we met. Tony Baxter and I are still friends. We talk as often as we can. He's very busy, he's amazing. And then you have Marty Scalar. Now Marty Scalar was like my, I gotta be careful how I say this because it wasn't because he was old, it was just because he was a lot like my grandfather on my dad's side. And Marty was just this guy that when I got frustrated with Imagineering and I did get frustrated with Imagineering, I would be like, <laughs> uh, I would go see him and I'd knock on the door. And he got to the point with Marty Scalar that he would go, Yes, Terry. He could recognize my knock. He could recognize my foot shuffle. And I would go, Marty. And he would go, what is it, Terry? Um, <laughs> I don't know if he did this with everybody else, but Marty was just this wise voice in the back of an artist's head. And he had this joyful inner humor and sweetness about him. And his wise words, in fact, he gave me a lot of pointers on creating. Because another dream of mine is to create a foundation like um, like Herbie Ryman. So Marty, Marty knew that Herbie Ryman's dream was to create a foundation. And that's how Ryman Arts was formed. And Marty was at the helm of that. He was instrumental in doing that. And he talked to me about some of the things I would have to do if I was going to create a foundation. Uh, one of the things that I... I am sorry about Ryman Arts is it's all about painting and drawing. There is no sculpting. So I would like to do one that involves sculpting because, of course, for me, that's my wheelhouse and that's what I love. I paint and I draw, but I love to sculpt. So I'd like to do that for, for young people who want to get to sculpting. I'd like to have a foundation. And Marty would sit with me over lunch and talk to me about the pros and cons and the ups and downs and what you really need. And uh, it was very helpful. In fact, I did get to speak with him just before he passed away. He was at a D23 event where many of us got to see him, right? One good thing about D23 was getting to see him and to get to talk to him. And he just had the heart, uh, you know, he had a huge heart as Beast Texas. And um, he used to have these beautiful events at his home. And uh, we used to go there and bid on stuff and support Ryman Arts. And, and it was just beautiful. But he really was my... When I was just about to lose it and said, you know, do I really need to stay? Besides Herbie Ryman, who said it was my duty to stay at Imagineering because Walt believed in passionate people. And there were too many in the, air, in the organization at that time he felt that were for the money. Which is funny about Disney because for the money, you know. But, uh, but we loved it there. And, and Herbie's, my cowardly lion said, it's your, it's your duty. You can't leave. Much like I was talking about Iger and the governor, the same. If it's your duty to help people understand what the passion is about the park, they just don't get it, then it's your duty to stay. And that's what Herbie told me and Marty continued to tell me all through life. We were great friends. And finally, I did a book called, uh, called uh, Tales from Terry, A Disney Artist's Life. And I'm actually in the process. It's been a few years. It's becoming, I mean, it has. 
because I have a few obligations that I want to get done first, like the ghosts. But uh, this book is going to be re-released, and uh, after you guys all read it and said that you like reading it, it's going to be really released and Marty did the forward to me. He told, I called him and I asked him if he would write the forward and he kept feigning like, oh, Terry, I'm sorry, I'm really busy. I don't know if I can do it. And then on Christmas Day, he sent me a letter with his letterhead and it was the forward to my book. So inside the book, you can get the book uh, electronically now because I don't have any more copies of the hard copy, but Marty's, uh, his stuff is inside and, and I talk about Tony Baxter in that book too and it's little because I want you to have a fast read. And it's also not done in 12 point, if you understand word. A lot of things are done in the 12 point uh, size. I did it in 14 so you could read it. Unlike my certificate on, in, of authenticity, which is a lot smaller because I wanted to keep it the size of the box that I, I'm going to put the ghost in so it's smaller. If you looked at the one for Diana Waller, you know, the, the certificate in Oswald, you're like, magnifying glass time, but at least you got it and at least it fits in the box. Um, but anyway, that's my Marty Scalar. Roly Crump lives out in a sort of a desert -y spot. And when I went to see him, he loves, uh, he, he has, you know, of course, his, his theater of the absurd, of the weird, of the unusual, of the incredible. And his house, he loves Southwestern art, kind of a New Mexico vibe. Loves Day of the Dead. Loves Day of the Dead. So I took to him a tea set that I had, uh, a tea set that I'd made called Dem Bones that had skeletons dancing around the teacups, around the coffee pot, and then loose bones in the bottom. So when you finish sipping the tea, there's illustrations of loose bones in the bottom, and I gave that to him as a gift. Plus a platter for his turkey that, that his wife loves to make a turkey, and once you eat the turkey, there's uh, bones of the turkey on the platter too, and that's a whole set. It was done in the, this kind of verdigree, coppery kind of thing. I did it at a color me mine for him and uh, I brought it to him because I, I just, I love him because he was an odd duck and you know, Imagineers are full of odd ducks. It's the odd duck division. We're all odd ducks. We look funny. We act funny. We're obsessed with certain things that many people wouldn't be obsessed, but that's why Imagineers are so cool. And really was no different. He was making these really amazing art and at the same time doing marijuana posters. So <laughs> go figure. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we became good friends, and I am doing his chess set. I have to call his wife. I keep telling you, every week I got a call. I tried the last time they weren't home, so now I'm going to do it again. And reason being is 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 really his hearing is a little compromised, so to be on the phone is difficult for him. So we'll do email because his eyes are good, and that way I can email him. I can show him what I got, talk to him about the size because he dreams about having a chess set that I'm creating for him, size like this. And guys, there's a lot of pieces in chess. He wants both white and blacks, right? Of course he does, we all do. But if you were to buy the entire set, it could cost thousands of dollars. Seriously, thousands of dollars. So I'm trying to find out a way that we could do this. Maybe you, you buy each piece and then it's up to you whether you wanna buy the board or not. Do we create the board? Do you create the board? These are things that I need to talk about with Roly to see if he has any kind of attitude. Or can I make them smaller? My whole team wants to make them bigger because you, then I can really get into the detail of them. But uh, I'm going to check with him first, of course, and see. And I'd like to get them done so that he can see them. Okay, so, so that is the next thing on my agenda once these ghosts are in production. Once you have pre-purchased pre them, we know how many we're going to produce and we're gonna launch, um, I can step away until they start to come off the production line. I can step away and work on the uh, Roly Crump chess set, which is next. And I've got some one of a kinds that people have ordered. I've got uh, one person has ordered the redhead, and the original redhead from Pride to the Caribbean. It's her dream to have this figure, so she is commissioning me to make one for her. And then um, I have a couple other things on the books. So, so I appreciate these one-of-a-kinds, which are yours and yours alone. They are an investment, but they are original art. You have the right to buy the wax because the waxes do survive. But that costs more because the waxes are usually left with me because they're extremely expensive. It's just what you want in your case, okay? 
I've got uh, the Tinkerbell map you may have seen. Uh, there's a very dear lady who's a Tinkerbell collector. She has my original clay, she has my original wax, and she has the Tinkerbell tiptoeing across the map because she was instrumental in its creation, as many Tinkerbell people were, but she was huge. And her husband decided that he wanted her to have this in her display case, so she has it. She's one of the few. She's one of the few that has it. Tony Baxter has one that I gave him of Maleficent. Maleficent clay, Maleficent wax, Maleficent done. And a thank you in a case to Tony Baxter for giving me the opportunity to be a collectible sculptor in the first place. So those are the only two, I think, that are that got it, that have everything. Usually people have the piece that they like that I've done, and then I have everything else. So uh, because it is an investment. Existencio, I know I'm going a little bit over here, guys. I apologize, but this is one of those detailed questions. Hang in there with me. Existencio, oh my God, have I told you this story? Where for the 20th, I think it was the 20th anniversary for Pirates. I think it was 20th anniversary for Pirates, 1998, 78. You guys are brilliant. You can tell me. But whatever anniversary that was, I'm out of liquid. Whatever anniversary that was, uh, a bunch of us were invited to be a part of a pass holder event at Disneyland. There we sold some very beautiful pieces. I had two up for that, and they cost just under $2,000 apiece. There were only 10 of them available. They were the pirate bed, skeleton bed of the pirate captain, and they were the, the jail, about yay big, like this. If you want to see them, hit me up. You know, post it in the comments. And, uh, and we will, we will get that for you. Uh, but those two pieces I had available as long, as well as the, did I have anything else? No, no, no. It was just those two. And then, um, other people like Dave Avanzino had some pieces available. Also, um, Eric Robeson, who is, uh, now living on the islands and does a different kind of work. But it's still brilliant because he, you know, the art, the brilliance goes with the artist, doesn't it? And Eric is quite a guy. Anyway, he had a painting he had done. We had done all this stuff for Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, we got to be together. We got to eat together. We got to visit together along with the legends. And one of those legends was Existencio. One of the things Disney thought would be great for the artists is the opportunity to ride Pirates of the Caribbean with Disney legends. So lucky me, I'm sitting right next to Existencio. I had told him how much I loved him. We got this uh, scroll that I still have of the from that event that has the Pirates of the Caribbean song on it. Yo ho, yo ho, that one, and uh, and other stuff. But there I am sitting next to Existencio while he sang to me and did all the dialogue from Pirates of the Caribbean. So you're hearing it like you do when you ride the ride and then you have you know x over on your side over here and he's in your ear doing it like for real it was it was amazing it was amazing it was it was magical guys you know it is you know it was absolutely flipped over this guy i'm one of the few people that when he was over older he remembered who i was but i think honestly to be full disclosure is that many of you may think I'm memorable, but this is really memorable. You may not remember my name, but the fact that I have blonde dread dreadlocks turning gray, yay, uh, that uh, it, they're not black and my skin is white and I'm very, you know, depending on what, what camp you're in, you either call me a light skinned black person or a white person, both are wrong, I'm mixed. So, uh, part white, part black, and this is what came out. This super light gal <laughs> with this hair. So, it's, 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 it's a memorable thing when you see all of this. It's hard to forget, and, um, and it's easy to remember. So, I will give part of that to this, okay? Uh, for me, it's not created so that I can be memorable. It's created because it is the easiest hairstyle on the planet 
for an artist like me. It uses the natural properties of my hair to uh, do my hair. So I'm no longer putting in relaxers to soften it or make it anything that it's not. It's all 100% dyed in the wool me. Okay. I used to dye it colors. You'll see here over on this side, this little piece right here. This is what remains of what needs to be cut off. But now my hairdresser wants me to grow them down my back because he thinks they would just look sensational. I told him maybe I would for him, but if I sat on them or did anything like that and they became cumbersome, I would ask him to cut them. They're, they're, it's actually a bit long for me now, but I told him if he wanted to, I'll grow them long and we'll see what they look like. I mean, really, what difference does it make? As long as I can style it, get it out of my face and do my work, you know? And um, so that's why I think Existentio remembered me later in his life when he was getting very, very old and... Uh, and uh, it was it was becoming a challenge a little bit. Not remembering people, but just you see me try to think of people's names. And uh, and I'm like, ah, you know, and I'm nowhere. I mean, you know, I'm nowhere near Estencio. So I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved uh, him. The other one was uh, was that's not on this list was uh, was Bill Justice. Wow. I was at a Ryman Arts event with the Disney and a fan club when. I got to meet Bill, and what a love. Uh, the funny thing is they all, a lot of these people have these super young wives, which is just adorable, who take good care of them and are their bulldogs at the gate, make sure they're protected. But uh, uh, he had one, and Bill is just a, just a love. He, used to, he, he kind of perfected, in my opinion, as I understand it, he perfected the drawing on napkins, which if you know Alex Mayer from Florida, Alex has started, Alex does that too. So uh, I was given a Bill Justice napkin, an original Bill Justice napkin with an illustration on it. And then I have an Alex too, so I have both of them. I really should frame them. Um, but right now they're gently folded in my, in my drawer. So, uh, but I love them, I pull them out every so often. I just love on them. Um, it's exciting, it's exciting. And Alex was a big fan of, of pardon me, of uh, Bill's too. So it's kind of neat to see Alex do these illustrations on, on the uh, cocktail napkins, you know. And uh, it just makes you think of Bill every time he does it, you know, and Alex too. Uh, but, you know, just great, you know, it's great. Bob Gurr, and then I told you about Tony Baxter, Bob Gurr. What is not to say about Bob Gurr? Have you met this guy? Oh my gosh, he is the marketing genius. He's actually a coffee. He's a coffee, he's a cookie, he's, a, he's an action figure. Why is he not an action figure? I should make him an action figure. He's amazing. Bob Gurr never stops, you know, just nonstop Bob Gurr, amazing guy. We're friends, we have breakfast a lot. With COVID-19, we have not had the opportunity to have breakfast. I have not called him, I really need to call him and talk to him because I miss him. Uh, he is amazing guy. He, if, it's, it's like my friend Jerry said on the last spotlight that we did on Wednesday, if it has wheels ch at Disneyland, chances are Bob Gurr's at the, at the base of it, of its design. True story. So um, I, I just think that he's just amazing and we get very protective of our icons, don't we? And, uh, and so I, ugh, he's just, he's just, he's just great. And again, you heard, you heard me mention Louis Garcia. Louis Garcia had another uh, incident, had another event that he did and a lot of the proceeds goes to the police department because he used to be a police officer and he helps the families of fallen policemen. He's a brilliant guy that Louis is just, he's just the best. Anyway, Louis Garcia, um, he had another uh, special 50th anniversary event where I did a stitch puppet. I built him and created him uh, simply so that Louis could auction him off and the proceeds would go to just what I said it went to. And there was a rivalry between two people uh, fighting for uh, this puppet. And the guy who thought he was going to easily win it, um, his name is Robert. And uh, Robert thought he was going to easily get it. And then, ba bam he found someone else. And when he realized that that other person vying for that stitch was Bob Gurr, he backed down immediately. He said, how can I take it from Bob Gurr? Bob Gurr won the stitch puppet and then came over and sat with me and said, you got to teach me how to use this thing because I just love it. And so I gave him some puppet lessons and Bob Gurr is really smart. He automatically took to it 
and as a result, uh, you he was on crew when he when he did uh, cruise appearances, he would take Stitch because he could see that's a way to reach the young kids. And like me, he loves the young kids. So a lot of times if he was on a cruise, he'd take Stitch with him. He was at an event, he'd take Stitch with him. And with his grandkids, he took Stitch with him. So, um, so the thing that's really cool about that is that, you know, it gave him a, re a chance to reach out and be known to young kids. Because when you tell the kids that you've done something like Atopias or monorails and they're like three, those of you who have children, they don't care. <laughs> they just want to see you do something entertaining. And Bob found that Stitch was his his entertainment. So that's how we really connected was with uh, the Stitch that he, he bought at the auction. So there you go, everybody. What a great question. What a great set of questions. Um, um, Michael wants to ask, we'll start with that question, Michael Roman, next time. Uh, other Imagineers that had impact on my life and you said, uh, other than Tony, but you also heard Blaine Gibson was the number one influence in my life. And then how can you go without saying Walt well, Disney was a major influence in your life? But I will talk about some uh, people that did just remind me. One of the people who I absolutely loved throughout my Imagineering time was a brilliant Imagineer named John Horney. So, Leo, you're listening. Put John Horney question, need a John Horney story for Michael Roman. Because John Horney is brilliant. He's fabulous. He's a curmudgeon. And uh, Leo, remind me, if you would, to bring some of his illustrations and you'll get to see why that man kept me happy, kept me healthy, and kept me going. The amazing John Horney. So, uh, we can talk about that at the next AMA. So, my friends, we are at the two-hour mark. And so, for those of you who have a life, those of you who are tired of hearing me talking, or those of you who just do not want to see everybody's comment pop up, uh, that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to go through the comments and, and pop everybody's comments up, because I like to do that. So let's get back and we're going to do uh, uh, all of this. We're going to get down here and do it. So um, Michael Clark says he's working and wishes everybody a great day. And then we're going to jump down here to let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Here we go. We've got a good morning, lovely lady from Lawn Smart. Thank you, what a lovely picture. It's so cute. Uh, Gavin may need, uh, Gavin may need Bob's support, thus he no longer has. Oh, I hope so. Uh, just a thought. Yes, I, well, I agree. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think he does. I, I think he needs, well, it's not so much, you know, that Gavin needs his support, but Ga he needs he needs Bob's education. Bob's got to tell him why. Okay, here you had the number one guy who could number one tell our governor why Disneyland. What what makes Disneyland special? Because not everybody knows why it's special, guys. You know, not everybody knows. And you're right, Lon. Absolutely right. Um, absolutely right. Yay, Angie! I was missing you. <laughs> I know, right? Well, life gets in your way, too. You know, today I was all snug, uh, it, curled up in the bed, and uh, I finally got the temperature, my air conditioning the way I needed it at night because I don't sleep well in warm weather. And, oh, my gosh, it was like pulling teeth to get me out. But And then, of course, I had trouble because I wanted to get up and work on something for Patreon. In my humble opinion, Disney has been generous. I have three children that are cast members. I appreciate all that they've done in the form of providing health insurance for them. Bottom line, Disney is a co company and uh, has to generate income and tighten their belts. Uh, that is well said, Bob. That is well said, which brings me to think about Delta Airlines. Of all the airlines cutting back, breaking the hearts, and scaring people, Delta has announced that they will not have to do it. Why? 
And this is funny because I'm not a fan of Delta Airlines, but I may have to change my tune. Yes, indeed. Because Delta Airlines saw this coming and said, hmm, maybe instead of us leaning on a bailout, which they needed, okay? Every airline needed. I'm not saying Delta saying they didn't need it. But they used that time to figure out a plan that if something like this happened, what could they do? And they announced yesterday they don't have to do any layoffs, they don't think. Because they went through all of their things to see if people would take early retirement or they worked with their employees and everyone. At least this is the way it's sounding now. I hope they don't have to, but that's the only airline that said that they could do that. Now, I haven't really heard much from Southwest, but wow, um, just amazing. No, I haven't. And how do you say your name? What an amazing name. I love, I love your skeletal picture there. Forgive me. You're going to have to enunciate that because I'm not about to, to be mean to your name, but I'm so glad you're here. And I have not heard of that. I have not, but I'm interested for you to tell me more. Yes, indeed. Okay, I understand Cali being protective but by not opening Disney, but Orlando has been open for months, and the numbers have dropped in their COVID, I think, not the people. Is that what you mean, Lon? Social distance mask and cleaning is working. I hope California is not basing their judgment off of one maskless uh, selfie. Yes, they're not. They're not, believe me. But what they are doing is, remember I told you, Walt Disney World is huge. Disneyland is tiny. Everything about Disneyland is putting a lot of fun stuff in a tiny little space. So every queue switches back. Passing each other is not necessarily easily done. Main Street has it pretty good. But what I learned from Disneyland is, although we're small, we figured it out. Okay. So we can't use Walt Disney World as an example because they're big. They're really big. And they have lots of areas in lots of space, right? So they can use it as a foundation, but it's going to be different for Disneyland. Much like my ghosts, I illuminated one, and because the others I thought would follow along in place, it didn't happen, which means every single ghost has to have their own R&D. Whew! But what they're saying... Disneyland is saying is we're ready. We've done. Come look. Come check it out. Tell us what else we must do to become compliant and then let us open. That's the difference of what Disney's saying. Don't use Disney World as an example because they're very, very large. And although they haven't had it, they've got they they've got more space, is all I'm saying, right? Disney can do it. They can. They can do it. And they say they're ready. They just want, here's what I'm getting. From what they're asking, they're saying we put plant, we put these, in, we've implemented these these protocols. Let me show you. Come and let come and see what we've done. Please, please come and see what we've done. Is all they're asking, and so I'm with them on that. Go look, Gavin. You need a trip to Disneyland, Gavin. Even if you haven't done it, you deserve a trip to Disneyland. Walk through. With the, with, the, with, the, with the upper echelon of Disney and allow them to show you what they put in place. Take your, 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 your experts with you and have them jot down, you know, this is good, but, you know, I opened a little shake shop years ago and the health department came in and I just asked them to nitpick with me. Tell me what the problem is. Look under the hood. I want this clean. I want this safe for people. You know, I'm only making shakes. I'm not cooking nothing. But put me through the ringer. This is all that Disney's saying is come. And if this isn't quite right, tell us how to fix it because so we, we want to open. Okay? So that's all they're asking. That's all they're asking. I visit Disney World and Universal a few times a week. 99% is very loyal to the standards. Much safer than the standard Walmart or grocery store. Exactly. Or Costco. Costco's great going in. Costco's great getting at the cash register. But in between, whoa, I was really having some problems. That was, a, that was a, over a month ago, full disclosure. So I'm going to go try again. But I was nervous because people just would not. And, uh, and that's tough. That is tough. So. You are in the right to bitch and complain, Michael, as he says. You're in the right to bitch and complain about our political process by voting. If you don't vote, guess what? 
Zip it is what Michael's saying politely. <laughs> you have no right to say anything. And understand, okay, guys, I, you, you remember, maybe you don't. Maybe your parents don't do this when you're younger. I'm 63, so I remember sitting in front of a plate of food, you know, and not eating it. You can see I haven't finished my oatmeal. I don't want to eat in front of y'all. I do it in front of my patrons because that's part of the process. But, uh, but, <laughs> but your mom is like, eat. There are people in China starving. Eat. There are people starving, you know. I don't know if your mom did that to you. Uh, but, but they did, my parents did that to me all the time and people died. So, so we would have the right to vote. People fought for this, for our right to vote. So we need to show respect, much like wearing the mask by voting. You know, people aren't asking you to vote. Well, they are asking you to vote for someone in particular, but I'm not. And many people, many celebrities who have come on and said vote, and some of the coolest uh, uh, celebrity voting, I can't remember her name because I'm not a, I don't follow many celebrities, but she did, I guess, this amazing song and she looked just beautiful. She was, she was posed and everything. And she said in a very sexy voice, vote. And like 50,000 people registered. That is an amazing lady, okay? So that is, you use your ability to, t to say to people, come on, register, let's vote. Let's knock this thing. Let's be the biggest show out, show up, show out, showdown, presence. Let's show the greatest presence of all time by blowing the doors off and people going, wow. Everyone voted, you know, everyone that could did. So I agree. My stepdad keeps telling me to register and vote for Trump. I never have liked the man even when he wasn't president. Deanna, you are a bold girl. Okay? Your dad shouldn't tell you to register and vote for anyone. I think we should stop that sentence is, Dr. D, register and vote. Okay? Your vote is your business. If you want to vote the other way, uh, you can. That's your right. That's what's lovely about this United States is we are allowed to vote for who we want to, and people shouldn't make you feel bad about it. Do some of us not understand why the vote is happening on the other side? Sure, but that's normal. So, so register, Dr. D, you got to, you got to, you got to, you and your husband. It is what it is. <laughs> Leo. <laughs> yeah, Pandora's a walk-on right now. I knew it. I knew it. How fun. Can you imagine? Have you ever done that ride when it's not been a walk? It's never been a walk on ride. An hour is a good thing with Pandora. If you can get on that attraction in an hour or less, you are sitting pretty. It is phenomenal. If it's that usually a three hour wait, unless you're fast passing it and the fast pass are the first to go. And even then it's like, Goody, I saved an hour. It's like two hours. So, boy, walk on ride, guys. If you live anywhere near Walt Disney World, I would do it just because you could say you did. Okay? I would do it, you know? Because I do see it being safe. I have several people that work at Walt Disney World. They say it's absolutely safe. They're doing great. But they're big. Okay? They're big. In reference to the propositions, I always look for who is sponsoring the commercial. We also need to do our due diligence. Just a suggestion. Hopefully it will help. I'm telling you, this podcast called Propositions is something you guys need to look into. It is really amazing. It is unbiased. It is what I need to study. So Propositions Podcast, Google it on your favorite platform for podcasts and listen to that. To listen to that. It's going to be great. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I had a COVID test this morning for an outpatient procedure next week. Many of us are going through this, aren't we, guys? Where if you need to see a doctor or something, sometimes they want you tested for COVID. So my husband had to go to the doctor for that imbalance thing where it ended up being a weirdo hair on his ear. And when he first went to his doctor doctor, she insisted that uh, he have a COVID test. So since I'm his wife, I said, while you're at it, which is probably what happened with Trump, you know, they said, look, you're not looking very well, Mr. President. We better test you for COVID. And, and the wife said, well, if you're going to test him, you might as well test me. 
You know, so that kind of happens, and that's what happened when we both tested negative. That was a few weeks back. We don't go anywhere, though. We really don't. <laughs> you know, did I mention that I shop at pavilions, and, and I, I have it the, the food delivered? And the thing about pavilions is the person who's picking the produce for me is 10 times better than I could ever hope of being. So I may never go back to the grocery store because <laughs> they're just brilliant. They're just so talented that I, I, I recognize an artist when I see it. And this one is the produce genius. So, oh my God, Talking Mickey blew my mind. It was so surreal. There's a video of a look of dumbfoundedness on my face through the whole time. Yes. And what happened was when I was doing uh, Talking Mickey Mouse, it required a big one system and a puppeteer. And then the performer wore the outfit and then radio controlled, much like the Country Bears, if you've seen those, that movie. But now, or the past five years has it been, guys, they could get that down into a chip. Okay, so the first thing they did was have Mickey Mouse meet and greet children, and the children just lost it. <laughs> because they did not like Mickey that close talking to them. It was kind of scary. So they put him in parades. And now they've got to ease talking Mickey. Ease him over to you. Ease carefully, carefully. Because everyone's used to the <laughs> kind of great performance by the by Mickey who doesn't talk so anyway it's just like my hitchhiking ghost two years ago I didn't was not able to create a platform for them to stand on that involved AAA batteries and keep them individual like you have all requested and now I can just like now a little chip activates talking Mickey Mouse you don't need a whole puppeteer and uh, bingo bango you got him so pretty doggone wonderful technology. Osborne Festival of Dancing Light at Disney. That is correct, Jim. And that was the thing that just, people love that show. And I walked in and just like Village of the Damned, they had to carry me out. So, um, so uh, I have to be careful around massive concentration of those little flashing lights. Um, your words are very powerful, Terry, because you were trusted, and that's hard to find genuine people. Thank you, Bob Dean. We've spoken about serious things, and your words come to mind on occasion. Thank you again, Bob Dean. I appreciate that. And it's because I, I'm dedicated to telling you the truth, even if it means that I'm going to cry a little or hurt a little, because sometimes things cut deep that, you know, a few weeks back, if you were watching my Facebook Lives, I had what I call a minor meltdown because I was really becoming frustrated at why people didn't understand that wearing a mask wasn't um, for them. And I think the meltdown was because I feared for them. I didn't want them to die. I don't wish anyone to die. I don't wish anyone to get sick. I don't want. To, I don't wish anyone to be on a ventilator. I just want. I wish for that eye-opening, get a clue moment. And so I want the Trumps to get that eye-opening, get a clue moment. That the doctors are not doing this to control you, they're doing it to protect us. This is a bad, evil thing, okay? It's not friendly, it takes no prisoners. So let's just be for everybody else. Yes, Bob, Buck Rogers moment. How did you know that's what I was trying to remember? <laughs> I love you guys because you guys all remember what I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, Buck Rogers, that just would not come. It just would not come into my head. <laughs> a puppuccino. Yeah, a puppe it might have been, but it was just a puppuccino. That's what she said, right? You seen it? Did you see that, Holly? Oh my gosh, the cutest TikTok. It made me want to do a TikTok because it was such a precious TikTok. I, I have trouble with these kind, kind of TikToks where they're all sort of doing the same dance. It's just above me. It doesn't mean that I don't like it. It just means I, I don't get it, you know, chalk it up to being older. But, uh, but the point is, I mean, but Dom Judy Dench got it because she had grandchildren and they sort of explained it to her and watching her do it helped and she really was cute when she did it. But uh, that dance, but uh, yeah, the puppuccino. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It was so cute. Oh, it was just adorable. 
Uh, it's something I actually shared. Have a great day, Ava. Don't work too hard. Have a good weekend. Yes, they do. They sell ice cream for dogs, and they give them a puppy whip, and they just baby your animal. It's a little cup like this so that their tongue can get inside. It's adorable. If you did not know this, celebrate and help your dog. Uh, have a good time. My dog just goes gaga for ice cream. So, Yes, so cute. Just adorable and really made me understand TikTok a little better. Uh, I haven't broken that to him yet. Uh, on the day that you guys all asked me, he, um, he was having some challenges with his work. Because see, when you're home and you're trying to do your job, I'm sure you've noticed that bandwidth is a big issue or things don't go as quickly as they could if you were all at the office, right? Because your office is designed to be productive and you're at home, things happen. And I'm here broadcasting and he's trying to do work and we are sharing bandwidth. Sometimes it can be very difficult. So I'm going to wait till he's having a good day. And uh, hopefully that's today. And then I will ask him about that spotlight. He probably will. He, if I let him talk about how this whole system is happening, this this look here, this look here, hey, what's happening? And uh, my close-up for uh, sculptures and stuff, um, you know, he'll talk about it. Or maybe we'll sit together and talk about it. And you'll get to see. But, uh, yes, he is... Uh, he is amazing, so hopefully he will, Deanna. Uh, I wear trifocal, no fun. You're talking glasses, that's what these are. Progressives. I like them. I like them. When I want to do close-up work, I have a couple of things that I do. I have a pair of glasses like this, and it's interesting that you bring this up, Deanna, these glasses are for working close on my sculptures and you can see if I put them in front of my neck that they are super powerful. You cannot buy them. See? <laughs> you cannot buy them at a like a Walmart or something. They were made specifically because when I am sculpting and using them, I don't hold things reading distance. I hold it up like this. It needed to have this much focal length. It had to be focused here, not reading, not like a book. So uh, I had to go in with my eye doctor. I have an amazing eye doctor. And uh, I said, I'm a sculptor. So I brought the sculpture in. I held it in front of my face and said, make it work. <laughs> Tube gun, make it work. And they did. So these I don't sculpt with, but I do put them back on and look at my pieces afterwards to see what I'm actually looking at. For you guys, because that's the way most of you are going to look at it. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. And you would have been in the bathroom for like an hour. And you and they would have been like, Deanna, where are you? Just like they were with me. Because who's not going to read those? Love letters. Back in the day, you know, I actually got a couple of love letters my mom gave me. My dad wrote to my mother. And I remember reading them and going, oh, this must have been a magical time. It really wasn't for my mom because he addressed him to a different address. And because my mom lived in a small town, they all knew her father. So they just dropped him off in the mailbox and she got in trouble for being with a black man. So, you know, for falling in love with a black man, not being with. Because back in the day, they did not do that stuff, guys. They did not just jump into bed together. They courted each other. Okay? Just saying. It's the mind you stimulate. Um... It happens to 56 too. Yes. <laughs> it can it can happen at any time. And but I'm just finding those vapor locks to happen more often. It could be that I've got everything going, you know, in here. Gosh, I got to go do this. Like yesterday. I I'm going to get my hair done, but I got to make sure the dog's up and fed because I go because my husband's on deck working. And then what happens is once I'm at the hairdresser's who I love my hairdresser, we're going to talk. And if I get to talking, I'm going to miss picking up my Hitchhiking Ghost uh, Certificates of Authenticity and my sticker. And if I forget to do that, then I'm going to have to go all the way back and do it again. And I don't have time to do that. And then today, I'm supposed to maybe be doing some cachet stuff with Michael Luzzi. And so, and then I got to make sure my husband has dinner and lunch. You see what I'm saying? So it may have nothing to do with age at all. 
It may have to do with when you're working at home, this freeway happens, right? This freeway happens. Oh my gosh, I got to get the ghost testing, but also I got to get the hitchhiking ghost testing, but then I got to eat and then I got to take my supplements and oh, my medication and look, the doctor called and oh my goodness, I've got to do that. And oh, there's one of a kind and oh, I've got to ship out the, the treasure chip and oh, somebody ordered some cachets and oh my gosh, this has got to happen. And oh my goodness, what's happening? And then boy, maybe I should rest because I'm really, really tired. And then this happens. Yep. <laughs> so if your mind is sounding like that, breathe, zen out, you know. As Master Shifu says of Kung Fu Panda, inner peace, inner peace, inner, inner, inner peace. And take a minute for yourself. Don't feel guilty because you need to rest. And if you get to the point where you don't feel like doing anything for a little while, you want to sit on the couch, you want to stare at the horizon, you want to do absolutely zero, you can't force that. Just go through that emotion. All right? Sail through that. It will get better. But that is something that's going to happen. And then you're going to fight yourself because I just went through this about two weeks ago where I did not want to get up. It was comfortable. It was cool. It was nice. And I was watching my favorite show. And I just wanted to keep watching my favorite show. I saw another show last night. At night, my husband and I will make dinner and then we'll watch something new. We kind of flip through. Um, the various viewings. We watched a few things, but for some reason, Turner Classic Movie is getting a little squirrely. It kept telling us we had an error message. But I did get through um, a couple of movies that I love and uh, got to see them. And we made it. We made it through by sort of just inching along through movies that we love. But then my husband got really tired of doing that. He's been trying to let me see you can't take it with you because I enjoy that. I'm a Jimmy Stewart fan. But it kept saying error, 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 and he was getting upset. So we went on to uh, uh, Amazon Prime, and we saw this show where the girl has the ability to see, to see death. So the specters come, and she can see death is going to happen. So it's kind of like Dead Like Me, except for she's not a green murderer. She's just a girl who was born with the ability to see people and to see death and see how they're going to die and her challenge with it. And one of the things that protects her is sunglasses. Her father said, if you wear the sunglasses, you won't see the, the creatures. And as a little girl all the way up through, she's realized. So she hates to take the sunglasses off because if she sees someone's going to die, she becomes hysterical and tries to prevent it. So, uh, it's so far, it's very interesting. It is a, um, I think it's from, I want to say it's not from China and it's not from Japan. It might be from Taiwan or Vietnam, but whatever it is, it's great. It's really good. I'm really loving it. So I'm going to watch another episode. It's only one season, but I, whoops, I just really wanted to watch it. So. And then there's a show called The Protector that's in its fourth season I've never heard of. So I said to my husband, please put that in the watch list because I want to check that out because if it's four seasons, somebody likes it somewhere and it looks kind of interesting. So uh, along the lines of The Matrix, I want to say Matrix because it's that you are the one. We are here to follow you kind of thing. And then that's where it's not like The Matrix or at least that's what it looks like. So. Anyway, that's what we do. We look at new shows in the evening if we can. Uh, most of the time, maybe not. Um, yes, Pauline, but you, you, you fight for what you want. And I love dragons. And I love Disney. And Disney doesn't do half you know what, except for in merchandise for some reason. I don't know what that's about. But as far as the parks, the Imagineers pull out every stop. They do not say, oh, well, let's do this half as good. You know what I'm saying? They are the creme la creme. And that's what I loved being a part of, is people who just go the distance and keep creating, this is them. And you know this because you love Disney and it's all their fault. So I am a busy bee, I'm a crazy woman. What can you say? You know, I don't understand people who say, I've, 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 I don't understand people who say, I've, I've binge watched everything, I can't stand it. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Will you send some of your time over to me, please? I could really use it. I'm really looking for that 35 hour day. Thank you very much. <laughs> So I joined in late, totally overslept. Uh, I got a snippet of your AMA talk. Yes, you did, and you know I just keep going, Pauline. 
I'm the never ending story. Uh, and I am going to do these little snippets. I keep promising you I'm going to do these little snippets. But uh, for now, during COVID-19, I don't mind going long, you know. I have to be a little careful because Gavin's going to come up. Um, oh, no, Deanna. You see what I mean? Was it President Trump? I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Oh, yes, David, thank you for asking me again. I reached out to her and did not get a response, so now it's time to shake her and find out where that pin is or where that button is because I don't know what's going on with that. I have no idea. I gave it over to Dayton Disneyana and washed my hands of it. And so uh, I got to get back in the game and ask. So thank you, David, for reminding me. I love you for keeping me, keeping me real. Yes, Bob Gurr's amazing. Yes, he is. They are all amazing, actually. So wonderful and warm. Yes, have a great weekend, Deanna says. She's out of here. Uh, let Disney be ticked out. Uh, don't discount before you have the information. Absolutely. Now, what I want Disneyland to do, Beth, and many of you who want Disneyland to reopen, is to do it by groups. And this is because you got your 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 uh, uh, Club 33 folks who were supposed to be able to go to Club 33, whatever they wanted. They pay a lot of money for that. You should bring them in first. You should say, okay, Disneyland's going to open. We're going to start with Club 33 for a few days. And then we're going to move to the uh, maximum pass holder. And then we're going to move to the maybe the next pass holder. And then maybe, and then the rest of the pass holders, and then open it up to the public. Because you got to regulate it anyway. So why make people angry right away? This is one of the reasons I was a big advocate for keeping it closed on the birthday. Because all bets are off on the birthday. Everybody wants that date. But you see, now we're coming into the winter time. Uh, some kids are going back to school. Kids are in school virtually. This is the great way to section it. Little pieces of the pie. Okay? Slow and easy. Wins the race. So this is my suggestion to Disneyland is to not just open it up to all reservations because you're going to have a lot of people that are doggone angry. Don't want to do that. Uh, but do it in tears. Start with Club 33 because they really have invested a lot and work your way down. You know, I think that would be fair. Uh, Washington Costco isn't any better. I went yesterday. Great. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> I really want my foster father to dig in ah, and my almonds. But uh, I digress. Did you go? Did you know Company D is open, but only for cast members, and you have to make an appointment? I did not know that, Bob. You know, I don't really think that much about Company D. The only time I think about it, and I should, because Company D is great, but I should because of um, I w I went um, I went I just went in January before we had the lockdown in Florida. They call it property control, and I love going to their property control. I should show you. I got a a uh, uh, the dragon, the Pandorian's ride. I got one of them that sits on your shoulder for like a really great price. Whoa! And uh, and then I got some broken ones that I'm going to dissect, but I won't do it in front of you. I just want to learn about them. So you know, learn that from Bob Gurr. Bob Gurr tour bus of Disney Studios is on my wish list. Oh my goodness. What you really need, David, is a Bob Gurr, Tony Baxter, Carol Wood Foundation train trip. Okay? I've done three. They're amazing. I w uh, they, ugh. David, they are, oh my gosh, they are such heaven. They are just dyed in the wool, make you cry. So much fun. Just amazing. And if I can, I'll dig up those behind the scenes and show you guys but oh my gosh they're amazing yes i i'm forgive me about this streaming today because i did not do them that what i did before the idea is to be consistent the only thing i can say today that was consistent it is friday but uh i had some trouble with i had some challenges with my page today and i lost track of the time so the way i stream is i try to announce it 15 20 minutes ahead of time of when i'm going to do it so if you're on my patreon page I go live every Monday and Friday at 8.35. And then on this page, this streaming, 9.20. Okay, today it was 9.25. So it's not your fault, Stephen. It's mine. Okay, 9.20. I used to do it on the hours, but it became 
I was always late. It was too challenging. And my coach said, just push it back a little bit. Give people a break. And so now, uh, 9.20 for uh, the public page, whenever I do it, Mondays and Fridays. And then Ask Me Anything are always Fridays, but 9.20. Unless I have something explode like an exploding cigar in my face, I'm going to be here. But the internet is the way it is, and sometimes you cannot control it. So you just got to go with the flow. So I do. So hang in there. And when it pops up and says Terry finally got it together or it finally allowed her to get in, there was one time Facebook just wouldn't let me in. And I kept saying, oh, my gosh, I've got in. And I tried to post on on and everything and let you guys know. Because I never know until I fire it up, right? So, so, but thank you, Stephen, for asking me that question because you're right. You know, you, you, you nailed it, buddy. Those are some strong glasses. They are. They are. They're a, they're a statement. Oh, you mean the, yes, the magnifiers. It's not so much. See, the problem with my glasses is they only need to correct an astigmatism. If I didn't have an astigmatism, I'd have 20-20 vision. True story. But here's the other weird thing. This is the thing. Terry is a weird and unusual creature. Uh, my astigmatism is 50% in my lens. Usually they occur in the eyeball itself. And it means that the eyeball is more long, like more squishy, instead of round. So when the lens processes the picture and the cone is supposed to hit the back of the eyeball, mine would be too long or they can be too short. We don't know so much about mine. It's kind of in the middle, but most of the uh, anomaly is in my lens, which means it's very challenging to correct. And so that's the deal with my glasses, my actual glasses. My husband looks through my glasses and goes, Bleh. but the reason is because he's nearsighted and I have only an astigmatism. But when I got my first magnifier glasses that you saw there, they were too far. They were designed for reading because nine out of 10 people use reading glasses, but I want it right there. And if that's not enough guys, I've got this. So sometimes, I'm wearing this, okay, plus those glasses you saw. So that it's like, ch -ch -ch -ch. if it's super small, which is why I can do this teeny tiny stuff that I do. Because now what I love about this particular, uh, these you can get just about anyway, but this one I really liked because you see this little funny sort of uh, science fiction-y, let me turn a light on and show you. This little science fiction-y thing up here, it looks like a little gun. Looks like out of uh, a War of the Worlds, actually. And then you just turn on its little ray gun. Boom. Ah! It actually lights your work from your vision. It's really neat. And then in the inside, it actually has another set of magnifiers so that you can snap them in place like that and have a double magnification. So this is just like if one is not enough, you got two. So I have every kind of magic magnifying device you could possibly think of. And that's simply because I'm look, I love to do the small stuff. I'm a nut when it comes to that small stuff. Good day, Cindy. I am doing okay, Adam. I'm just, you saw my riff about everything that falls on top of you. And that's when you just breathe and do the best you can, you know, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. That's all you can do. Don't be too hard on yourself. You know, there's people out there that are heart surgeons and uh, brain surgeons, and that's that can be really, really scary. Thank you, Henry. <gasps> Your picture is so cute, Henry. I love your picture. See, this is why I do this, because I love people's pictures. All oh, their little cute. Rick Moran was punched in the head in an unprovoked attack in Central Park, and they said it had to do with a game. I don't quite understand that game, but I will be on the news learning more. So that's all your comments, everybody. I love you so much. It is now 12. We have been on for two hours and 43 minutes and counting. And a lot of you have stayed through the whole time. I want to thank you for that and tell you Monday, I hope to give you uh, the classes, the dates. If you live anywhere outside of the U.S. and you want a pumpkin class, hit me up and we'll try and schedule a class for you and your group. And uh, more on that Monday. And then we will have a little bit of an update 
We'll talk about uh, the latest news, whether in sports. No, not sports. I'm not a sports person. Sorry. So I don't know what happened with the Dodgers. Can't tell you. Not a sports girl. I'm all about the movies. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, you guys have a lovely weekend. Let me know what you're doing. If you're going to go down to downtown Disney, good for you. I'm one of those people who can't. Just can't go there yet, guys. Just don't have it in me. Um, thank you, Pauline, for saying that. You are adorable. All of you are just so great. Um, oh, census work. Cindy, fun. I met a lady yesterday who's going to be like the, the, what did she say she was going to do? She's doing something with those battle wars where they have the robots that battle. Whatever it is, it sounded like a cool job. So I hope you have a, you all have a good time. Okay? All right, guys, be well. Do something wonderful for somebody else, and you'll feel better, too. You really will. It doesn't have to cost money. But if you got a couple of bucks, you're in the line of Starbucks, how about you buy a coffee for the guy who's behind you in line? Hey? Seriously. You just don't know what it'll do for that person at a time when everybody is so angry, right? So, you want to get out of your depression? Put it on somebody else. Think about someone else. Share the love. Share your humanness with someone else. Okay? I love you guys. Be well. And we'll talk soon. Bye for now.